Good, good, good morning, good morning, good morning, honorable members. My apology. I uh, was just checking my process today. Let me take this opportunity to welcome all the honorable members that are here. The honorable uh, Van Firen, I've noted, is also here. The honorable chair of chess, good to see you again. Uh, our leader, uh, we are just from the meeting of Chair of Chess just now at 8 o'clock. Thank you very much. Uh, I've also noted uh, Honorable Meku. I've also Thank noted you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Klute. And I've also noted Honorable Khatebe. Morning, Chair. Uh, I've also noted, I am not sure if uh, Honorable MEC Treasury, I saw her, if that is her. Morning, Chi. Wow. Morning. We are blessed even today. Morning, morning, Honorable MEC. How are you? Well, thank you, Chi. How are you and all the members, Chi Person? Thank you. We, we are trying. We are trying. It's not easy, but we are trying. Thank you. Uh, uh, I know that Honorable Hassan, uh, she indicated yesterday, uh, I don't know if she's already here. Uh, she, I must also recognize her. Honorable Van Firen, I've also recognized her. Uh, and all those members who will be here with us, uh, I think Honorable Majake, Honorable Khatebe. Let me welcome all of you, honorable members, uh, especially the Office of the Auditor General. Uh, I'm sure it's Matthew who's with us leading the team today, if that is her. Let me also greet her and her delegation. Uh, you are almost uh, wholeheartedly welcomed. Uh, the Provincial Treasury, which is also led by the MEC today, mm -hmm. the delegation. Uh, I don't know. I've. Oh, yes, Mr. Lutando. Good morning, my good sir. Uh, good morning, uh, Chair. T thank you, Chair. Good morning to honorable members and the MEC and the colleagues. Chair, I also want to mention that from our side, we also have my boss, Undate Otto Aduta, whose part will be joining us today. Oh, thank you, Chair. Bab Otwa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, very thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Good morning to you, Chair. Good morning to the members, and also good morning to the MEC and the colleagues. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Mr. Otwa. You were once my mentor. I always tell people during my time of local government. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the, the, the Salga, uh, I'm not sure who is here. Uh, I think the, the chair of Salga indicated to me that uh, there would be someone representing them. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, the committee coordinators are aware of the uh, metric or uh, I think it's Councillor Ntapumbana, uh, if that is her. Chair Fusna. Yes, Major King. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Honourable Members and all our distinguished guests. Chairperson, I've just received an email from Salga that they have a PEC meeting and they will only be able to join us after their meeting. Thank you, Chair. Uh, okay, all of them, because they said they wanted to bring someone, but it's fine. If that is an email, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and then let me also welcome the 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 Cocta Cocta delegation that are here with us. Uh, you are you are you are you are, you are also welcomed. Uh, uh, I'm sure. We will shoot straight, honourable members, to the attendance register for an apologies. Uh, 
but I know the, the one standing apology is uh, Honorable Nessa Ramulele. Uh, we wish her a speedily recovery. Uh, I know that she, she is trying. Uh, it's not easy, you know. Uh, that is why when the more you get old, the, you must take care of yourself because now uh, it's not easy when, <clears throat> when, when you, you are in these difficult times. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Matt Jackie, the committee coordinator, can I check with you, uh, Linda Tomromezi, who... Uh, thank you, Chair. The only written apology that we have received up to now was from Tabung Fusanyan Municipality, the one that I've shared on the group, the WhatsApp group of ROPEC. Thank you, Chair. Uh, but for now, we, we must officially say it in the meeting. The WhatsApp group is not official. Uh, so thank you very much for officializing it, uh, Major Key. Uh, thank you. Uh, Honorable Khatebe is with us. Baba uh, 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 Thank you very much. Um, uh, also, I'll also get another indication if the honorable members who have just joined us. Uh, last time, members were not being allocated questions and uh, i said members who have but who are part of uh, today's endeavor i would also like them to participate uh, uh, just for them to be part of 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 us so that we then allocate certain questions and it does not channel them only for ask those set of questions it actually says to them they can still ask other outstanding matters of our own local municipalities. Uh, let me also take this opportunity, honorable members, to recognize and respect the executive mayors, the troika of different municipalities, the honorable speakers, the honorable uh, 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 chief whips, uh, the honorable MMCs for finance, uh, 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 I think I think one 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 issue uh, also the the accounting officers, municipal managers, CFOs, uh, and your delegations, uh, honourable executive mayors, le amohile le kwano kopano ena ipo kuhuru ili kopano yarona ya komiti ya zadi chelete karu free start yalochota la kizamla. The Parliament of the Free State. I was just relating in so to uh, 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 to the members, but what I said is that we all welcome them in our portfolio committee of the Free State Legislature, which deals with finance uh, and also the public accounts. Uh, so you are all welcomed. I am not going to waste any more time, honourable members. I would like to. Then for those that I might not have missed uh, my apology, I think I've, I've, I've noted everyone. Uh, uh, maybe let me just get an indication. Uh, Majeki, can I then ask the IT, Ndate Tabo or Aus Mekanyisa, you are also welcome to Ndate Tabo, Debo Mekanyisa, the IT gurus and uh, our uh, communications, a team that deals with the external uh, uh, public uh, participation in in support of being transparent to the community out there. Seven of them. Uh, 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 and we then have the program for today on the screen so that the members are able to see uh, and also the mayors are able to see how is the sequence of today's uh, I slept around before when the, the, the news my office are still talking ma, 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 good morning TK TK from Mutaka then, uh, yes. yeah, TK, TK from Mukaka. There is a gadget written TK Mukaka here. Please, my brother. Uh, Please, uh, don't, don't, don't. Uh, mute him. Please, Please, don't, don't, don't. Please, 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 don't, don
but le rutwa rutwa tsa mawane thank you very much eh ndate thabo it or mekanisa can you then assist us on to flash the program of today whilst we are still waiting for ndate or mecheki to then uh, give us a a, a a municipal sequence of today. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, the sequence as we have planned it for today, the first municipality to appear would be the East Chair, Mangaung Metro Municipality for the 1920, St. Lake, Kopano Local Municipality, Pumalela, Nala Local Municipality, and Mokaka will be the last one for today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Major King. Um, honorable members, I think I also, I'm not, I'm not sure whether, Major Key, you did receive the, 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 the apology of the, the speaker uh, of Mangawu Metro. Uh, I don't know whether the apology meant for yesterday's meeting or it meant for today's meeting from their side. Uh, uh, he, he, he indicated that he would not be here, but uh, I saw that they have sent it directly to me. I don't know whether you receive it from your side. No, we didn't check. We didn't see it. Uh, uh, that's why sometimes it's also important that we do these things administratively. Uh, I, I just want to, to caution as an advice to all the leaders of the institution. I know that we might know each other as leaders uh, from different, uh, um, uh, you know, where we come from, but it is also important that our offices must then deal directly with the committee coordinators because tomorrow it will then create a serious problem amongst uh, the, the officials that I work with because yeah, once guys, the uh, mayor just... sends me an apology directly without even instructing the PA or and secretaries of their own to then forward the apology, it then uh, says that uh, uh, it, it, it will be actually a, a wrong conduct, so to speak. So I only saw the apology very late last night when I checked my mails uh, of the speaker of of Mangaun. So I, I thought you also had it on your side. Let me just check with Honorable Panfiren. <clears throat> Honorable Panfiren. Morning, Chair, and uh, morning. Uh, members, MEC, councillors, mayors, everybody. Jake and I mean, Mangaung, I feel is is uh, one of the or our only metro which is has been placed under administration, and we lost leaders. And I think it's important that we have the speaker here. Uh, I don't know what the reason is why the speaker uh, is not available. But I remember the previous time we didn't want to appear in front of our committee. It was a, a quite an interesting situation where he just said, um, I don't want to and I, I don't feel to, that I have to be here. So I, I, I find it strange that he's not available today. Uh, can you perhaps just enlighten us what the reason is for that? And I think then we have to take a, a decision because this municipality is under dire need of uh, intervention. And uh, I think we, we bow our heads in shame because the only metro that we've got is the only metro in the country that's been placed on administration. Thank you, Chief. Uh, honorable members, here is an issue. Uh, I'm sure I once uh, dealt with the, the conduct uh, when we were in the meeting on how the speaker raised certain issues. Uh, uh, the, the apology was that uh, he had to attend other meetings. Uh, I could not, and I could not uh, know exactly which other meetings the honourable speaker was referring to. 
Uh, so that is why I wanted to raise this matter sharply so that we then take a decision uh, on whether we summon the Honourable Speaker, uh, whether which action do we take. Uh, yeah, what is that? Honourable Klute? <clears throat> Thank you, Chairperson. I actually recollect that uh, that meeting last year. It was in the INSEPI. I was I was in that meeting, um, and and there was a, a a sense of disregard for for this committee uh, during that during that meeting. Um, and that's exactly what I what I pointed out to last week when we when we discussed the room. Um, we have. Actings everywhere. Everyone is basically acting at this stage, and the speaker is the only uh, person who could actually give us some guidance on what's going on. This municipality now is not here. Um, yes, we need to take a, take a decision. Um, we uh, having other meetings. We don't know what the other meetings are for. All we know is I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't want to go into that matter, but but we need to make a decision on on how we're going to to deal with this because he's the only not acting person that could give us some guidance on what's going on in this municipality. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Tulute. Uh, I'm just going to request the indulgence of the Honorable Chair of Chairs. And I must also remind the Portfolio Committee that despite that the Honorable Chair of Chairs, Honorable Buti, is a member in the committee, but because of our own hierarchy in the legislature, he, we account to him some of us in terms of our portfolio committees as chairpersons. Uh, I actually wanted him just to 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 really. Uh, I'm sure not, sometimes when somebody more senior in terms of our hierarchy speaks, uh, maybe the, the 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 delegation from municipality will understand better. Uh, you know, I have I, I know that I've been identified as this person who is always fighting uh, whilst we we are dealing with the audited financial statements of municipalities. Uh, I I don't believe that we are fighting, but it is a method of accountability. Uh, it is not fighting because a fight is something else. Uh, we we just want to play the role that we are envisaged by the constitution to play of making sure that uh, the, the, the municipalities or whoever who deals with finances, the public spurs, the public uh, money, uh, uh, everybody just accounts. So I I want to give over to, if, if members are not saying anything now, Uh, oh yes, uh, Chair of Chairs, let me just hear other members what are they saying and then I'll just ask the Chair of Chairs just to also just talk to us about that matter. But before, let me give us a cut in. No, no, very, <clears throat> very quick, Chair. Before maybe the Chair uh, of Chairs uh, gives the meeting uh, a list of. Uh, uh, Chair, indeed I agree with uh, two honourable members on the issue of the Speaker. And uh, based on our previous uh, experience, I would urge the meeting not to accept the apology. And at the same time, let's take the matter to the committee session for further deliberations so that to me it might not occur well to be discussing the matter before everybody. That's my submission. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much, Honorable Members. I think I must just give over to to Honorable Chair of Chess because I don't see any other hands as per that suggestion, but I feel strongly that uh, the Chair must just say something. Uh, Chair of Chess, may I take you? Thank you. Uh, Honorable Chair, our Chief Whip, uh, Honorable Vice Chabalar, and greetings to all Honorable Members uh, honorable councillors, uh, our mayors, executive mayors, uh, all protocol observed. Well, I think honorable members are correct. We are all well conversant with the constitution of the country 
and all the legislations that uh, compel municipalities to appear before the, the legislature. So it's quite um, obvious that uh, the legislature has uh, legal instruments that could compel and propel uh, anyone to appear before it. So yes, Honorable Khatib is correct. We may not exhaust the matter in the midst of all uh, uh, municipalities present here. But we must make it very clear. We must recuse Mangaum from this meeting. And then we will then agree as the committee later on in terms of the approach that will ensure that ultimately we get the speaker and the collective into this meeting. So let me not consume much of the uh, committee's time in explaining things that are already known by all of us. Let's just recuse Mangawung and then until we get a full composition of the delegation that has to come and account before this committee. And if this is a norm, we will also apply consistently the same approach throughout all municipalities. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chair of Chess. Thank you very much. Um, um, uh, uh, I I see the end of I saw the end of Honorable Clute before I saw the end of Honorable Van Firen. Maybe I I don't know. Let me let me give Honorable Van Firen because now I don't see the end of Honorable Clute anymore. Honorable Thank Van Firen. You. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I support uh, the Chair Chairs and Honorable Radebe. Um, can you just? I'm sorry. I think I missed it. Uh, what was the explanation again from the speaker? I, I I think when you said that I missed it. You can just quickly just inform me again, please. I wanted to quote it verbatim, but it's fine because my WhatsApp is doing what is this initializing and so on. The 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 the, the meeting was just saying he's attending other from other meeting. Okay. Other meetings, yeah. He was just saying other meetings. So it was not clear on which other meetings is actually attending. No, uh, then I support uh, the proposal from the chair and Honorable Debe, and also the fact that uh, he disregarded this committee in the sense that he didn't even put in a formal uh, or proper uh, apology. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Honorable Klute. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, my support as well. I just want to know in terms of the program further are we are we going to request uh, are we saying that we recuse them today and request them to be here tomorrow uh, just for so we can do our planning as well uh, how are we going to uh, to to move forward with with Mangum? Uh, I think like uh, honorable members have just suggested uh, we will have our committee session probably just for two five minutes before the end I'm not sure what time so that we, we we then agree uh, on what uh, you are saying, Honorable Clute. Uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, Honorable Members, can I just check with you? The Centlec is the the municipal. Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to do a quick tutorial uh, on OBS. Uh, I was talking with one of my friends, and systems. one of the things we like to use OBS uh, for is to increase uh, the level of professionalism when we're doing Zoom meetings, uh, team meetings, can I or any kind of webinar. It's always nice to have like a lower third identifying uh, who you are or something like with, uh, water with your logo. Because I know they um, have their own board. Uh, they, they also have their own leadership in terms of the board and in terms of the CEO and so on, is it should we also release them or should we allow them to 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 be part of the deliberations in terms of because I know when we call entity we call it as entity we don't we don't actually cluster them with their own parental uh, municipality so in terms so in terms of the category. Uh, 
I want, just wanted to check from yourselves. Uh, uh, Honourable Confident. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, I agree with you that we normally don't cluster them, but but uh, Centlec or Mongol is 100% shareholder in Centlec. And I do believe when we when we question them or, or pose some questions to them, I think it's important that the municipality is there because there might be some contradictions between the answers that they give and the answers that, and then we can immediately ask Mango Hung to respond on that. So I, I would suggest that we do the two together, uh, but that's up to the committee. Uh, that's just my feeling. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Van Fieren. I think, Honorable Van Fieren, we, we, we are both right. Uh, let's, let's, let's agree on that. Uh, we will we'll, we'll not be allowing the municipality of Mangawu Metro today to be part of this uh, the, uh, program of today. We will then release them uh, uh, as per the advice <clears throat> and our deliberations. Thank you very much. May I just get indication very quick, uh, Honorable Mayors who are here uh, of the municipalities. Honorable uh, 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 Dr. I think I saw you. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, my chairperson, I'm here. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Mayor from Tukuloko. Uh, It's not to call a sorry cop, I know, Farello. Good morning, uh, my chairperson. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm here, Chair. Thank you. Uh, I forgot to indicate to yourselves, uh, Honorable Executive Mayors and Mayors, the committee, in fact, in terms of our process for today, would, heart, would wholeheartedly want when members speak, uh, can we then show face so that we are we are aware of, of, of mayors that we are speaking to and everybody is going to do the presentation would prefer that uh, we we show face and uh, we are able to know whom we are speaking to. It's, it's only honorable members who do not sometimes show face except myself because I can imagine when I'm the chair and I, you can't even see me, uh, it does not <coughs> a visual sense in terms of the process of our meeting so we thank you very much but by the time we give you the platform you will when you do your opening remarks mayors uh, please remember that uh, for the sake of the committee thank you very much uh, the the Mokaka municipality uh, honorable Chakani. They are not yet logged in. Okay, uh, and then it's it's Nala, it's it's Tukulu, Sorry, it's it's Kopano. Uh, obviously, Mangau is not here. Uh, Mecheki, what? Which municipality we are left with? Pumelela, the Honourable Ntatemi Taung. Good good morning, Chair and uh, Honourable Members. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Siabonga, uh, honorable members, let's then hit the ground. Uh, uh, you are also welcomed, honorable MEC. Uh, uh, you are here. Uh, is there anything you want to say before we go into municipalities? MEC, Treasury. Okay, then uh, let's <clears throat> then start with the, the second municipality is what, uh, MHAK? The purpose of the meeting today, uh, Honourable <laughs> Members and Mayors, it's just a hearing on the audited financial statements uh, for your municipalities. Uh, uh, so we, 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 we were expected in fact, we have invited the, the 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 following delegations: the mayors, yourselves, the honourable speakers, honourable chief whips, honourable the MMCs, and the chairpersons of MPEC, councillors, honourable councillors, the chairpersons of MPEC, and the MCs for finance. Obviously, the the manager MM, 
and the financial audited, uh, I mean, chief financial officers, and then audit committee chairpersons. And this is one area, honorable members, we don't ask questions a lot. And I don't know why, or maybe we forget about it. I think we must also hear from the side of the audit committees of every municipalities because uh, some municipalities we don't understand how things have been done uh, uh, i think it's important that the, we hear what the chairs uh, of audit committees would say to us because uh, it is also another uh, structure that must also assist in terms of achieving a better audit outcome so the role that they play it's very critical and I think we, we, we also need to play an oversight there and check. Uh, uh, yeah, and then we are also expecting to be given the resolutions. Uh, I'm also going to request uh, that uh, after the presentations, I mean, sorry, the questions and everything, we you will just read those resol recommend, I mean, resolutions or municipalities, if they are ready, they can just summarize because I'm sure you indicated to them uh, that they need to inform us in terms of the outstanding resolutions. Because if those resolutions are not being met, I think we will have to take serious uh, harsh decisions in terms of, 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 and that is why legally, Mekoni, uh, how do I forget you? Uh, you are also recognized and welcome, the uh, advocate CIFO. Uh, 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 how could I forget about you? Uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, um, I also going to request your legal advice. I, will, I wanted to speak to members first. Uh, in terms of our resolutions, honorable members, uh, I, I think we, we, we must also recommend, but uh, I will check, we will check legally with the the committee, I mean, legal advisor, uh, advocate Connie, C4. Whilst we are, whilst I'm still raising this matter, maybe on your own you can just check uh, the these recommendations or resolutions of OPEC. Uh, I'm strongly think that uh, honourable members they they need to be taken to uh, the council. Uh, because if it is only a matter of a mayor and a parliament, sorry, and a portfolio, it then does not make sense. Uh, I believe that if these resolutions could be taken uh, by the speakers to, 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 to the council or by the mayor, I'm not sure in terms of legality thereof, uh, but I know in terms of reports of Section 80, they will be taken by the mayor. And, if this matter is from the level of the topic, uh, I need they need to be uh, uh, noted in the council so that uh, the council it becomes a council resolution uh, to to then make sure that these resolutions are being implemented. For an example, if we are going to take a decision to say in a particular out audit outcome of a municipality, it was found that. Uh, supply chain officers were involved in 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 or their families are involved in other businesses and then some tomorrow we then recommend that uh, the municipal manager must be able to take this matter for for criminal i'm just making an example to open up a case or whatever it is but if it is just between ourselves uh, and it does not have an impact within the council and the municipality as a resolution. Uh, I'm, I'm just raising it because I've been doing a lot of thinking. I've also consulted most of the other due restrictions. But unfortunately, I want to tell you, honorable members, uh, you uh, other uh, provin provinces are, are learning from us. Uh, it's, it's so amazing that there are things that we are doing and they have not Done them. For an example, this issue of uh, taking municipalities to account to propag in other in, in other jurisdictions has not been happening. We have been trying to inform them on how to do it and and how they. So so I'm just saying. Uh, 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 I've also tried to consult, but I've I've noted that in some 
uh, due restrictions of, of provinces. They, they, they are not even doing it that way, but they thought it would be a very good, uh, it's part of, of accountability. And I'm sure if, if the auditor would, would, would hear this thing, and they will also be happy because then it then says municipalities would honor uh, also part of our 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 responsibilities as as, as portfolio committee of property. Uh, I'm sorry for that, but I, I just thought it is important that I must raise it from this platform. Uh, I just saw the hand of Honorable Clute. Thank you, Chair. Just a quick question. Uh, I just want to know regarding the resolutions, how are we going to handle it? Are we going to uh, make that part of our questions now? Uh, if so, are we going to allow for everyone to just ask about the resolutions or are we going to uh, divide them between us and amongst us ourselves as well? Uh, I, I thought the approach that I, I thought it would be better, that is why I said Majeki must just be ready to raise them, uh, whether we, she raise them first for us as per each municipality or we prefer that we share them as part of questions. I, I will hear from you members anything that would, would work smoothly. When I went through them, I saw them, there are not too many to, to maybe to read them over. Uh, or we should just say resolution one of whatever than to read all the entire uh, phrase of those resolutions. But for the sake of this process, it will also be important for, for transparency of our work, maybe just to remind them by reading them uh, to them. Uh, uh, I don't know, Magic, you will just check with me. Uh, I noted the Pumelela resolutions, I noted the resolutions. And I've noted that there are not too many that we can share them amongst members. So I thought it would be best if we ask the major key just to read as per each municipality by the time we are dealing with each municipality. I think it will work much easier for us. And then members will then, honorable members, uh, will then come in and, and maybe request the questions, uh, understanding of why these others were not done. And yeah, thank you very much. Uh, another one, two days are to that. Uh, just to get the major key uh, for that part. The first municipality, major key. Um, thank you, Chair. The municipality to be uh, questioned now will be Kopanong. Uh, Chairperson, I've also communicated the outstanding resolutions to them as well as to the members. So uh, the resolution of Kopanum stated here is resolution 4 of 2018 in the list. So I don't know if Chairperson wants me to go through all of them because it's A up to H. Uh, yeah. yeah, that is that is what the Honorable uh, Lute was just asking. Oh, Kopanum has got too many of them. But I think you will be able to, to run through them for us. But uh, after the the questions uh, will will end up with the resolutions. I think it will, it will be good for us to do that so okay. that we are able to summarize the issues if members also could not got clear answers from today to, to today's hearing. They are able to use that time when we deal with resolutions to put more emphasis on, on what they would want to see. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Honorable Executive Mayor, Honorable Mayor, uh, uh, Baba Matwa, uh, let, let us give you this opportunity to give us an opening remark. And then after the opening remark, we will then give over to our legal manager, uh, 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 Advocate Sefo, to then take us through our rituals of ensuring that Renkaka, uh, we take an oath or affirmation. Uh, and then uh, proceed to the honorable members. I have requested Majeki and Ndatem Rometsi to send uh, the set of questions to honorable members who are here, and I'm sure they have also given me an indication of who is asking which question so that we, we run with it today uh, very quickly. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, honor, uh, honorable mayor Ndatem the floor is yours. Uh, good morning, uh, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, 
uh, to the members of of the committee. Uh, also, I would like to greet the honourable MEC, as well as the office, the office of uh, AG, Department of Copta, uh, Department of Judiciary. We can't see, uh, honor- we can't see you, honourable executive mayor. Uh, I've just made made an indication that uh, we 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 would want to see the mayor that speaks to the free status and ourselves. Thank you. Honorable Chairperson, am I audible now? Can you see me, Honorable Chairperson? Uh, for now, you are not still visible. Chairperson, uh, I'm not still visible, Chair. You are not. I'm not uh, visible. You are not my 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 honourable executive mayor. Uh, that that is why we have requested Copta in our last in- interaction with Copta to say Copta uh, give support financial support give support to municipalities uh, in terms of the four IR. Uh, we, we are very, very behind as a free state in terms of adhering to the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, you can imagine how sad it is for the executive mayor or mayor of a municipality uh, who is struggling. Uh, it, it does not work well with me. Uh, I think uh, we, we are out there at, at, at body YouTube and so on. Now, if our mayors are still struggling this way, it does not give a good picture. Uh, please, uh, MMs, please, please, please uh, transform municipalities to the four IR. Chaperson. Uh, Honorable Mayor, you, you are still not visible. Uh, I can see that you are struggling. Maybe it is because of the systems uh, that are in your expo in, in your disposal. Uh, we we can just allow you to continue, but it does not give us a good uh, <clears throat> a gesture. That is why I want to blame your 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 accounting officer. Uh, if the MM is here, uh, he must actually assist. Just go talk to Copta if there are no so that you deal with the IT issues. There is the Honorable Executive Mayor. Thank you. Can you see me? Uh, nice and clear. <laughs> no, thank you, Honorable Chair. No, thanks, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, Chair, uh, I'm here with my team. Uh, thank you for having us uh, to this session of ROPEC. Uh, my name is Kole Lematwa, the mayor of Kopanong. I'm here with my team here. Uh, is myself, is the chairperson of MPEC, Councillor Sola, is the chief whip, uh, Councillor Jan. The MM is here, Ndate Kubeka. Uh, the CFO, the newly appointed CFO, who has just started on the 1st of June, in that day, Jabulan Makubu, he's here. Uh, I must say, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, the speaker is not here. We have been trying to, uh, to get hold of him since this morning, but... Uh, we could not really get a hold of him. Uh, his phone now is, is off. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, we are here uh, without uh, having the, our speaker uh, with us as part of, of our delegation, Honorable Speaker. I mean, Honorable uh, Chairperson. Uh, I'm not sure, can we proceed? Uh, I just wanted to. Uh, for 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 the committee to note that we are here uh, without the speaker. The speaker is not part of of the delegation. 
All right, thank you very much, Honorable Mayor, for that opening remark. Uh, I'm sure we'll also get an indication uh, as and when we deal with these matters, because if the speaker is not here, it does not give a good picture because the Auditor General was able to, to disclose only her opinion on issues of certain questions we need to ask from the level and the role that the speaker plays within the council. Now, it then gives us a serious critical problem where, where the speakers are not here. And this is real, a serious issue of accountability. We are being blamed out there, even myself, Honorable uh, Mayor, the demand that yes. we've done corruption and and, and and this is where we need to really clarify the issues uh, in terms of the public uh, it's it's finances uh, they, they say it's taxpayers money now if the speakers are not here uh, then it's it's quite a serious issue uh, i don't know <coughs> Then I have to continue, uh, honourable members, and then the mayor will have to then answer on behalf of the speaker. Uh, I don't know in this instance of your municipality, honourable mayor, is your municipality executive type or is it? It's not actually plenary because I get a plenary. It's the double barrel. Uh, 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 honourable Seah says his double barrel is a mayor and a speaker. So in your instance, it's, it's not that way. So there are those questions that would have to be asked by from the speaker. But if the speaker is not here and the phone, he is not available. Uh, I I don't want to assume that presume that he <coughs> he's not he decided to vanish. I don't I don't think so. Maybe it's part of the connectivity. I am not sure. But uh, I, I thought we would, would have to continue, honourable members, uh, on that base. Uh, uh, but members will also indicate uh, what, what is it that needs to be done. But, but this is not a good sign. This is not right. Uh, this, I don't know how, what, what, what should, I, I'm, I'm speechless of the conduct of our own uh, political principles. Uh, it's, it's really a, an embarrassment, if I may put it. <coughs> uh, Honorable Van Fieren. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Chair, I think that's the reason why our municipalities are in the, this financial crisis that we are, have been seeing and are experiencing every day now. Chair, um, this, the speaker didn't even have the decency to send in an apology. So I, I think we've been very strict on this principle from the start. Uh, it's very sad because we haven't got time and we, we should actually deal with these matters and deal with these municipalities um, and, and finalize them. But it, it, it seems to me that it's a, a easy way, a quick, easy way out. And, and my proposal is that we don't uh, reschedule them, we summons them. I think the whole municipality, uh, and that includes the previous ones that didn't appear, and we, we summons them from the start, and then at least we know uh, they're going to be held um, um, accountable for the fact that they don't appear then. And then we can take even bigger actions, but, but we haven't got the time to actually do this, what we're doing. But I, I don't think we can continue uh, because we've already discussed and said a president regarding this, and, and it's not acceptable uh, what is happening. Thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable uh, Van Fieren. Honorable... <coughs> yes, Chair. Um, my, if, may, may I make a proposal? Um, uh, I think we need to start one to, by... by seeing who's available in, in their full capacity, which of the municipalities are. And, um, you know, you, you spoke about taxpayers' money being being wasted. Um, actually, <laughs> as we are now, we are wasting taxpayers' money and time. 
Um, and uh, my proposal would be: can we can we find out which municipalities are are, are here that we can um, in their full capacity, so we can can continue with them, and then those who are not uh, present fully, that they be um, requested. It's, you know, it's a soft word. Uh, I actually like the idea of, of summoning them, but anyway, um, so that we can continue, but say, Kopanung, uh, whenever they are ready, uh, at last, we continue with them, but let's let's start with the municipality who, who is here in full capacity, so we can continue with them. Thank you, Honorable Klute. I've noted Honorable Meko. Honorable Meko. And it will be Honorable Khatebe after Honorable Meku. Uh, <coughs> let, let me appreciate the, the 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 resolution of how the committee dealt with the issue of Mangau. And 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 respect your the guidance by the chair of chairs as well as the the, the summary that uh, we, we will have to reschedule and, and reconvene Mangau. But my, my, my point would be that PROPEC has invited municipalities to account to the committee of the legislature on the issues of finances arising from Auditor General's report, both in terms of the law uh, and how local government is structured. The head of the municipality is the mayor. And, and I think with regard to the, the municipality that is in front of the committee now, the mayor is present. And I suppose, Chair, with the necessary and required entourage in the form of the MM, uh, the CFO, we've just been told that is a new CFO, and so on and so on. And for me, those are critical people. <clears throat> if we have to interrogate a municipality, um, and, and municipality, of course, uh, uh, the one that is uh, you know, our meeting now, and I suppose many that are here. If you understand how municipalities are structured and operate, you will appreciate that uh, the, the mayor does not have jurisdiction over the speaker like he has on the MM to the extent that he'll give instruction and insist that the speaker must attend meetings like this one. Now, our decision will be unfair because even when the mayor would have to retrieve back, it will remain that it will be an issue of the mayor engaging the speaker in expressing the importance of him or her to attend this meeting. Of course, this meeting is important on behalf of the municipality and all of that. I'm saying, Chair, that let's proceed. Let's not punish one, the municipality, two, the mayor. Let's find ways and means of how we can punish the speakers who are obviously defying PROPEC, or for that matter, any other committee of the legislature. Where there are questions that uh, the speaker has got to respond to, let's zoom in there and say the committee will summon the speaker. If the speaker does not come, the committee will have to take the matter at a higher level. But to want to retain all these municipalities because sp speakers are not present, I, I don't think that we are doing justice as well on our part as a committee of parliament. Because then we are allowing these individuals who are obviously not taking their work seriously to impact on the program of the legislature, our work, and what Honorable Trude speaks about, the taxpayers' money. I don't think we desire to do that when I'm to last year. So my view is that let's proceed. The leadership of the municipality, the head, even in terms of the law, 
MFA gives the authority of finances to the mayor. The accounting officer is here. Somebody is responsible for the implementation of the budget. And that's why my proposal says that uh, let's, let's note the issue. Uh, when the committee is in session, let's take very harsh decisions how we're going to deal with these people who are undermining. Uh, I would understand if the mayor and the MM are not, uh, are not present or did not honor the invitations. And, and I think that will paralyze even the content, the engagement at the level of content of this particular meeting. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I've, I've, I've noted Honorable Khatebe, and then I will end with Honorable Chair of Chairs because I've just noted Honorable Van Firen's end. Then after that, the Chair of Chairs will, will come in. Uh, Honorable Khatebe. No, 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 thanks, Chair. Uh, I'm partly covered by Honorable Mabel. But I must also, Chair, raise this discontentment to say it has been a trend for the speakers, in fact, to derail the working of the committee. It's not something new, which I think we need to pronounce ourselves on. And the secondly, the issue of Mangaung is exclusive on our members. Remember, we took a decision precisely because of our previous experience on the matter. So let's not uh, uh, make it as if we have set a precedence. Therefore, in the absence of the speakers, we had to return the municipalities. I do, uh, I'm of the view, Chair, that we, we should continue with the meeting. And uh, later on, I think we'll have to see how best can we address the non-attendance of speakers to this session. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Van Fieren. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I agree with the speakers. Let's continue and we'll sort it out later on. Then. Thank you. Honorable Chair of Chairs. Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, we must not take decisions uh, that are convenient, but we must always try to take decisions that are principled. Uh, in so doing, we will have decisions that are sustainable in the near future. It is this legislature uh, that is known to be an activist legislature that champions democracy, that understands the necessity for a collective leadership, and which in any situation is expected to entrench that culture of collective accountability. The moment we single out individuals who carries a responsibility that is interwoven with that of other uh, members of the collective, we are setting a new, a new precedence that we cannot uh, 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 fathom for a foreseeable future. It, it's in, it's difficult to comprehend uh, a, a future trend where we will just be dealing with mayors and, and dealing with, with uh, chairs of, of MPEX in the absence of speakers of council. Uh, it will happen. It, it will happen. And uh, I just want to, to raise that as an alarm to say it might be convenient for us to, to speak to those who are present here today. It, it will serve whatever purpose uh, it might attempt to serve. But we are now collapsing the very same systems and tradition which has sustained our democracy. We've just refused uh, to to allow Mangawun to, 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 to present here because of the central role of the speaker as the chair of the council. Now, if we are to allow the other municipalities to proceed in the absence of their speakers, I, I don't know what rationale will that be. But I'm saying if really it is a convenient decision we're taking, 
I am one person who embraces collective more than anything. If we fail as a collective, <clears throat> then it is a very good collective. So as our, uh, 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 our victories. I will not necessarily uh, uh, isolate myself or differ with the collective. If the collective sees it fit to test this new perspective and approach, uh, we may as well continue with it. But beyond this particular exercise, let's go back and, 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 and introspect and assess as this collective in the absence of all municipalities as to whether what is the impact of, of this decision that we are taking now? We speak of a speaker who cannot even be reached by his own immediate colleagues. The mayor has just a uh, bad testimony now that the phone of the speaker is off. They are struggling to get hold of him. The same speaker who must convene council and see to it that decisions of council are implemented. Now, uh, it's a crisis on its own. It's a it's a very a huge issue that if need be, we ourselves as the legislature, we could still uh, make time for tomorrow. When we said Manga, we must go back. It's not like we're postponing them in, in into uh, a distant future. The same could be done with Kopanong. And we have powers legally to summon these individuals to come with their collective and to instill a sense of collective accountability. So let, let us not take shortcuts uh, and, and try to take approach that is convenient. Tomorrow, if we have to sit here like national sphere of, of uh, I mean, parliament does, if we have to sit here until the early hours of Wednesday morning or Thursday morning, let it be. We need that collective here, not individuals who will speak in the absence of others. So I just want to raise that thing, uh, my dear learned uh, uh, colleagues. Let's let's be firm and consistent. Uh, thank you very much. Chair. Thank you very much, Chair of Chairs, and let me also welcome Honorable Khakhaou. Uh, and other honorable members who might have joined without you know, uh, that uh, noted them. Thank you. You are, you are welcomed. Uh, honorable members, uh, I, 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 I think I want to... Oh, honorable Tadel Tuka. <laughs> you are wearing a hat, so uh, I can't see you. <laughs> thank you very much, Chairperson. <laughs> thank you, Happy my father. Thank you. you are also welcomed. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, I, I think members, uh, we, 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 without maybe that you are not also members, uh, it will also be uh, prudent that uh, we all participate in such uh, uh, issues, members, so that uh, we, we send a clear message across the board of all the portfolio committees. You see, honorable members, the only issue which is the most important issue is the one that has been raised by the chair of chess and i don't want to repeat what he has been saying what he said but we 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 we, we can't honorable members on the basis of our work and we say no for the sake of doing our work uh, let's just allow them uh, uh, this is this is very serious. Uh, uh, this is a serious transgression, and I I believe that uh, we we will prove them to be part of the other municipalities. We have two municipalities that did not come before us. Uh, let's allow this municipality to go, and they need to correct themselves. And I think I want to honor and appreciate the good work that has been done by the honourable mayor and Tatemata because. He was then able to say, I have this delegation with me, uh, which other mayors could not do in previously, where they will say, I have a speaker, I have this and so, and I try to call this and make sure that all his delegation is here. So I, I, I am going to summarize, honorable members, that we will not allow them to be part of continuity now, uh, because what also makes me more not happy is because the mayor last week 
was supposed to appear on Friday. He then put an apology on Friday to say they will they will they are busy. There is a deputy minister or minister in their vicinity, so they need to be there. And I I took that seriously, and I had to say it's fine. Let's allow you to come today. Now, when they supposed to come today, then they are not uh, in in their own. Um, uh, what can I say? They, they are not all of them are here. I I don't think it's 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 a good it's a good gesture. I I don't subscribe to that. I'm I'm not happy with it. So let's just allow them to join Mangau. They will come. They will be given a date. Another uh, Khakhaw. Uh, Chair, good morning. Good morning, colleagues. Chairperson, I'm, I'm just so are they coming tomorrow or is there a specific date outside of tomorrow that will be um, that will be scheduled for, for them? Uh, I, I, I was I was just going to check with me, me, me Jackie, but I think tomorrow should be the last day because we don't have any other days. Uh, they will have to come tomorrow because they are using fortunately it's a visual. It's not like they have to travel from how I mean, sorry, Bloemfontein to Harib. Fortunately, they are still in their comfort line, uh, so they will just have to rejoin for tomorrow. Uh, we'll, we'll, because honestly, we want to we want we want to send a, a message uh, to mayors, to speakers, and that is why we even said we have agreed that let's allow chief whips to be here as council whips, as chief whips. Let's allow uh, sorry the, the the chairperson of audit committees to be here. All these people plays a critical role in the transformation of municipalities in day to day in good governance and so on. So we will we will see you tomorrow, uh, honourable mayor. And thank you very much, uh, uh, you. honourable members. Thank you, thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, honourable mayor. Thank we will you. release you for tomorrow. Let's let's allow the the third municipality, uh, Majeki. Uh, thank you. The next municipality would be Kumelela. Honourable Datem Taum, uh, you can give us a closing, uh, sorry, an opening remark. Uh, you are welcome, and your delegation. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chairperson. Uh, 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 honorable members uh, of the portfolio committee, MEC of Finance, Honorable Khadija Brown, the Department of Opta, um, the Office of the Auditor General. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Honorable Chair, I'm, I'm with my, my team. Uh, the team is as follows. Uh, I'm with the, the Speaker, Councillor uh, Dr. Zwani, uh, the Chief Whip, uh, Councillor Simon Tabalala, uh, the Acting MM, Mr. Leslie Mukwena. Let me indicate that uh, my municipal manager is on on sick leave, hence uh, uh, the acting uh, municipal manager. The chief financial officer, Mr. Francis uh, Ralibena, uh, the chair of MPEC, Mr. Fala, uh, the chair of audit committee, Mr. Nzala, um, chair. It is a privilege and honor uh, to once again be afforded an opportunity as to Melena to uh, uh, present uh, our uh, affairs uh, to the committee. After another year of many challenges brought by coronavirus, uh, COVID-19 has drastically changed the way we do things and definitely it has brought a new normal. Honorable Chair, due to COVID-19, more ratepayers defaulted uh, on their monthly accounts. 
uh, especially during the hard uh, lockdown. Uh, we also, as the municipality, experience uh, an increase in terms of indigenous uh, households. Uh, in 20, uh, uh, May 2020, Honorable Chair, uh, one of, of our towns, three was, was, was hit by a severe a drought, uh, which com compounded uh, our challenges. Uh, the municipality, in partnership with uh, uh, DWS, uh, COPTA, and the Office of the Premier, he uh, was forced to drill uh, 48 uh, boreholes. The whole town was supplied uh, from uh, uh, boreholes uh, for a period of uh, uh, about uh, four or five months. However, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, the municipality managed uh, uh, during uh, uh, 2020, 2019-2020 uh, financial year, uh, to electrify uh, 300 uh, houses in Zamani uh, through uh, Schedule 5 uh, of Dora. And uh, at the same time, uh, the municipality, uh, uh, with part in partnership with ESCOM, uh, managed to electrify another 300 houses in Temperature Extension 4. Uh, Honorable Chair, one of the biggest achievements uh, uh, for the 2019-2020 uh, financial year was the fact that the municipality managed to retain its unqualified audit outcome. Uh, for the current term of office, the municipality managed to uh, retain uh, four unqualified audit outcomes and one regression, which was a, a qualification. So thank you very much for uh, affording us uh, this opportunity, uh, Honorable Chair, and your comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Datum Taun, Mekoni. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning, honorable members um, and the distinguished guests together with colleagues. Um, MM. Yes, madam. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Mukwena. Um, sir, may you please switch on your camera? Chairperson, I'm not so sure if I should comment on the dress code. No, it's it's not actually commenting, but it's 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 it's, it's a principle that uh, 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 during the time when you you do the swearing, uh, it's important that. Uh, we put respect to that effect. Uh, a jacket will be more, more, you know, uh, respecting in a way. Uh, that is why it's important to that them taun ahu potentate acting M M or the executive mayor who appeared by Kia High or from Pile Parliament. It's important to the accounting officers because I'm sure Kalau will before the committee today. So I I, I thought it's, it we should be knowing it by now. Uh, yeah, but it's fine. We we can we can we can proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Sir, are you going to take an oath or an affirmation? Yes, madam, I'm ready to take an oath. May you please state your full names? 
My name is Malifezani Leslie Mukwena. Do you say that what you're going to tell the committee is the truth and nothing else but the truth? If so, kindly raise your right hand and say so, help me God. Help me God. Thank you. Um, good morning, CFO. Uh, good morning, Mia. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you say, say, are you going to take an oath or an affirmation? An oath. May you please state your full names? Francis Do you say that what you're going to tell the committee is the truth and nothing else but the truth? If so, kindly raise your right hand and say so, help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Executive Mayor, uh, I I think uh, I must just, uh, with all the respect, I don't think your accounting officers, they were aware that they are addressing the parliament today. I thought if I'm going to leave them, because they are of my generation, next time they will not know that when you come before the parliament, it is important that uh, you, you 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 show respect, especially when they are senior uh, officials of municipalities. Uh, sometimes it's really meeting in Haru, so it's it's also good to go and just put the jacket on, just to show a respect, especially not me, but all the members of the parliament. Uh, so so when I get to the Lamba, uh, I'm sure they are not aware the status of our meeting for today. So I just hope yeah. next time they will be reminded. Che, 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 let me uh, uh, apologize uh, uh, on behalf of the municipality. Uh, maybe due, due to the ab uh, absence of the municipal manager, uh, they, they were not sure uh, how to uh, 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 dress uh, for this uh, uh, meeting, so I humbly uh, apologize uh, uh, on behalf of the municipality chair. Thank you. No, thank you very much, uh, Executive Majoro. Uh, let's then uh, shoot straight to the honourable members. Uh, I, I made I made aware that uh, we. we we are requested that Honorable Chair of Chairs will then deliver the first set of questions. Uh, if you are ready, Honorable Chair of Chairs, uh, if you have them with you, I'm just going to give you the platform, my Honorable Chair of Chairs. No, thanks, thanks, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Honorable Chief Wee. Uh, the ones that have been tasked uh, to deliberate on were on Copano. So there's a new list for Pumelela, which will be led by Honorable Khatebe and, uh, and on, I think Honorable Meku. In fact, it, it will be Honorable Fanfiren for Pumelela, followed by Honorable Khatebe then Honorable Meku. I thought I must just bring that to your attention, Chair. Thank you very much. I think I've just checked directly from Mechek, but when I see in the group is corrected. Thank you. Honorable Van Fieren. Thank you, Chair, and uh, uh, let me also welcome the municipality. Chair, I'm going to shoot directly to the questions. Uh, the first five questions is to the speaker. Um, and I'm sure they've got the questions. Has an action plan been so the first one, has an action plan been implemented to address audit findings? Two, do you ensure that the timelines and actions in the action plan are com complied with? Three, has the council ever held you accountable for the non-implementation of resolutions? Four, how often do you receive Section 71 reports? Five, does council deliberate on these reports? 
Then the next three is to the mayor. Uh, how do you advise council to ensure that the decisions have an impact? Seven, what are you going to do differently to improve the audit outcomes? And the last one to the mayor, have section 32 committees been established and are they functional? Then to the chairperson of MPAC, according to the AGSA investigations, were not done into instances of unauthorized irregular as well as fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Why have you not conducted any investigations? Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Panfiran. Uh, uh, accounting officers, we, we, we're just going to allow you to respond to the questions. And then if members are not happy, we we will then uh, get the follow up from members. Can I get that team on Messi for can I get that team when I begin that team on to Melina? Sorry, I can't climb. Can uh, Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, the question had, had been echoed. Uh, I should think it was clear that uh, when you speak to us. Thank you. I'm asking Chairperson if I can get clarity uh, whether the question must be uh, answered by the accounting officer or the speaker herself. Yeah, we will we will request the 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 honourable speaker then to come in. Uh, but Kipupa, when you speak to the members of your committee, can you then be visible to us? Thank you, uh, honourable speaker. Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, Honorable Mayor Haruboni. Uh, sorry, Honorable Speaker Haruboni. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Chairperson. <clears throat> and good morning, members of legislature. And good morning, MEC. And good morning. My colleagues, yes, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Uh, you, you, you may continue. I thought the accounting officer was going to, but I made a mistake. It's, it's um, the speaker who's supposed to respond. Thank you. You can continue. So, Chairperson. Uh, I didn't hear clearly what is number one question and, and number two. If uh, you can repeat for me, please, so that I don't mix issue. Uh, my, my apology once more, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Mayor. Uh, Major Key, we did we send the questions to the municipality now, now? Yes, Chair. Uh, I'll just kindly request that they check uh, the emails, please. Okay. That is why I I was checking with the municipal manager uh, because I wanted just to check with them first. Uh, if they they did receive those questions, uh, can they share them to the office of the speaker? Uh, if the speaker could not get them, so that we continue. Okay, no, no, I, I did receive uh, okay, the question, uh, uh, Chairperson. No, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, first question, uh, has an action plan been implemented to address audit funding? Yes, the action plan was submitted to Council for implementation. 
Number two, do you ensure that the timelines and action in the action plan are complied with? The answer is uh, the timeline were not complied with because the management letter was only received in March 2021. The munis municipality has only two months to implement the action plan which is impossible to achieve. Number three, has the council ever held you accountable for non-implementation of resolution? The council has never held me accountable for non-implementation of resolution as I always drives to implement council resolution. Number four, how often do you receive section 71? I only receive section 52 reports that the mayor present to council on quarterly basis. Number five, does the does council liberate on this report? Yes, the reports are discussed during council meetings. I'm Dan Chaperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I see the follow-up from Honorable Klute. Uh, thank you, Chaperson. I'd just like to know, um, the um, there was should have been an action plan, and, and, the, and the speaker indicated that it was, uh, especially to, to address audit findings. I would like to know uh, from the speaker what were the, what were the details of that action plan. Thank you. The action plan was uh, that one the auditor raised by a uh, the Auditor General, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Klute, I just saw the hand. Can we move? Thank, thank you, Chair. We can move. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can we then move to the, the questions of the Mayor? No, thank you, uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, on the question, how do you advise council to ensure that their decisions uh, have an impact? Uh, Chairperson, uh, on this question, uh, I'm guided by section section 152 of the constitution of the republic of, of south africa uh, the constitution outlines uh, that uh, the municipality must ensure the provision of services to communities in a sustainable manner uh, if there are uh, interruptions in terms of provision of services, for an example, uh, if there is electricity outage, I will always, in, uh, or water cut, uh, I will always advise uh, a council uh, to communicate with uh, communities so that they know uh, 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 what to expect. Uh, uh, Section 152 also uh, ensure that uh, as the municipality we promote uh, social and economic uh, development. 
Now, in whatever we do, uh, in whatever decisions that we uh, we take as a uh, Pumelela municipality, uh, we, 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 we make sure that uh, we promote uh, social development, uh, we promote economic uh, development, uh, we use the land uh, 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 to, to, to promote uh, the economy uh, of the area. Uh, it also, uh, we must also ensure safe and healthy uh, environment. So in whatever decisions that uh, we normally take, uh, we prioritize a safe and healthy environment. Uh, I always encourage, especially ward councillors, uh, to ensure that there are no uh, illegal dumps. Uh, there is no uh, littering uh, uh, in, in, in our areas. Uh, we normally use the EPWP, the C CWP, uh, where we are lacking to ensure that uh, our communities uh, are always uh, uh, staying in a safe and healthy uh, in, in environment. Um, public participation uh, it's also uh, very key to the municipality uh, in whatever uh, policies that we want to implement uh, the bylaws the budget the IDP we involve a uh, community uh, 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 in those uh, uh, decisions in terms of uh, Chapter 4 of Municipal uh, uh, system, uh, Systems Act. Uh, again, chairperson in terms of Section 56 of Municipal Structures Act, uh, as the mayor, I'm tasked with the identification of the needs uh, of the municipality uh, together with uh, uh, my exec executive committee and, and 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 we normally advise council uh, on the needs uh, in terms of uh, our priority and the availability uh, of funds. Chair, I also recommend the strategies uh, uh, from time to time uh, to improve the economy, uh, the efficiency, and the effectiveness uh, of the municipality. As I've already uh, indicated earlier on, that uh, as the municipality use um, land uh, uh, to enhance uh, the economy uh, of the municipality. Uh, I also advise them on how to improve the efficiency of credit control and revenue and debt collection services. Um, from time to time, I, I also advise council uh, on the on the implementation uh, of municipal uh, uh, bylaws. Uh, there are different uh, bylaws uh, in place, uh, which from time to time uh, I advise uh, uh, council uh, to implement. Uh, Briefly, that's what I can uh, say, Honorable Chair, uh, on this question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mayor. Uh, Honorable Members, is there any other fellow? Or I see the hand of Honorable Fanfira. 
Honourable Van Vieren. Thank you, Chair. Um, the Mayor now just referred to uh, enhancing the economy through land. If you can just explain to us what, what does that mean? What, what does the municipality do to enhance the economy through land? And then, Chair, um, you also spoke about enhancing debt collection. Can you perhaps just inform us what is the percentage of debt collection currently? And what is the outstanding debt debtors book? What does that look like? Um, because, uh, and yeah, maybe I should just stop there and I'll refer. Maybe I can include it here, Jay. And then also, the previous year, they informed that informed us that 99% of the equitable share was uh, um, salaries. What is the current stance on that? Because that's going to influence obviously the service delivery that they already talked about and this beautiful municipality that they've got uh, because I think the picture is being skewed a bit regarding that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Van Vieren. Uh, Honorable Executive Mayor. No, thank you, very, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chair. Uh, yeah, on the, I think uh, the CFO and the MM will uh, also assist uh, to answer some of the questions raised by Honourable uh, uh, Van Fieren. Uh, Honourable Chair, when 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 I referred to uh, the use of land to enhance uh, the, the economy of, of the country, you know, the, the economy of the municipality. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Chair. Um, the, the municipality owns uh, in all uh, the three towns a pocket of uh, land, a, a prime land, a, we have started, uh, Honourable Chair, uh, to make land uh, available. Uh, uh, in fact, we, we had invited uh, uh, developers uh, to come into the, our area uh, to, to, to do some uh, development. Uh, for, for an example, uh, in in Niemel on the R R34, uh, VKB has just purchased a uh, land, and uh, um, the development is uh, in in the final uh, uh, process uh, where uh, VKB is planning uh, uh, to move all its uh, facilities in town uh, uh, to the entrance entrance of the town uh, where they will develop um, a, a VKB fuel that will operate 24-7. Uh, uh, Memel is a small town. Uh, you don't get fuel uh, overnight. Uh, uh, all the, the, the filling stations close uh, at night, but this one will operate uh, 24 hours, 24-7. Uh, and uh, in terms of the, the, the plan, uh, plus or minus 80 permanent jobs will, will be uh, created, and uh, the employees will also uh, have uh, shares uh, in the company, the same. Uh, will also uh, in free that they, they, they have already uh, they are almost uh, finalizing uh, the implement um, the development of uh, another uh, uh, filling station where uh, about 20 jobs permanent jobs uh, uh, will be created uh, in warden on the end uh, on the n3 um, even though the process is a bit uh, slow, but uh, uh, we are also planning uh, to put a huge uh, 
a, a development. I'm just I'm just mentioning this uh, chair. Uh, uh, there is Abato, uh, uh, black owned Abato. It will be the first black owned Abato uh, uh, in Pumelela. Uh, 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 that is also uh, in the process of being uh, finalized. Uh, uh, it will not only uh, be an abattoir, but it will also be uh, where meat will be, will be packaged uh, for international uh, uh, markets. Uh, so that's how we uh, make use uh, of land to develop the area, the economy, to make job creation. There is also a filling station that is coming uh, 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 as you enter Friede from, uh, from Warden. Uh, so, so those are some of the projects uh, uh, in the pipeline. Chair, on the uh, debt collection, uh, the municipality uh, is not doing well, especially after the COVID. Uh, 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 COVID-19. Uh, I've already alluded to the fact, uh, uh, to that fact uh, in my opening opening remarks. Uh, but Chair, um, those consumers who can afford to pay, uh, they do pay uh, uh, their accounts uh, the farmers around Pumelela are very helpful in this regard. And, and, and Chair, the reason why I'm saying uh, we, we are doing well, uh, uh, we have, in the past five years, uh, we have not missed uh, salary, salary payments, we are servicing uh, 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 our creditors uh, with the little that uh, uh, we are uh, uh, collecting, but we are not doing as well as uh, uh, I wish, uh, Chair. And then, Chairperson, on the equitable share, uh, I will, I will uh, uh, with your permission, uh, request the, the CFO. Uh, to uh, to comment uh, on that one. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mayor. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, Honorable Mayor. Uh, thank you once again, Chairperson, and good morning, everyone, and all the protocol is observed. Uh, let me mention, in terms of uh, of uh, the total debtors book, uh, the municipality is sitting at uh, 347 million 823,000 uh, on its books uh, for all the old debt. Uh, we are owing ESCOM to a region of 142,000 million uh, 563,000 rents. Uh, currently, our uh, our collection is sitting is fluctuating around 52 50, percent. Uh, this shows that uh, the consumers are not uh, adequately or uh, consistently paying their uh, services. Uh, the situation in our municipality is as follows: most people are not uh, uh, working. Uh, there is a high level of poverty in our municipality and there are no uh, major economic activities taking place. Therefore, uh, we are struggling to, to uh, recover revenue from our consumers. Uh, in terms of ESCOM debt that we are struggling to settle or to reduce, uh, we need to, Chairperson, allow us to report, to confidently report that we have entered into an agreement with ESCOM uh, in our in, in our uh, electricity area of supply, which is a uh, warden area, because we have three towns: warden, Miemel, and Friede. Uh, for 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 Friede and Miemel, 
the electricity supplied by ESCO. For Warden, it's the municipality who is the sole supplier for electricity. Therefore, uh, in terms of the debt that we are owing to ESCO, we are saying that we have managed to negotiate and enter into contract uh, with ESCOM to install split meters in all the households. Uh, we also went further to install uh, conventional meters to all of our facilities uh, so that we can at least try to be able to, to honor the current account. Currently, we managed to uh, improve uh, our sales of electricity from a region of Plaza Manas, 300,000 per month, uh, up to a region of Plaza Manas, 1.5 million uh, per month. Uh, this shows us that we are a little bit or on the verge of honoring uh, the current account to ESCO. Uh, what is the challenge currently is the penalties that we are paying, especially during winter, that we are paying for NMD, the Notified Maximum Demand, especially during winter when people are using more of their appliances, we, we exceed our current, our NMD, and thereafter we suffer uh, penalties that are plus or minus 200,000. Uh, Put yourself, uh, as an intervention to apply for uh, funding to upgrade the switching station in, 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 in Warden in order to upgrade the notified ma maximum demand. We have a uh, send application which we are hoping uh, that it will, it will be approved for the coming financial year. As soon as the NMD is ne negated or curtailed, therefore we will be in a position to report that we are uh, we are breaking even in terms of our current account to ESCO. And therefore, that is going to uh, ensure that uh, we are starting now, to, we are going to start now to reduce our, our debt that we are owing to ESCO. ESCO has, uh, has actually uh, helping in terms of doing a quarterly audits in the area of Warden where on quarterly basis they are auditing all households uh, for, for electricity tampering. Uh, they are also using their system to check uh, the trend of people uh, purchasing the electricity. Let me also uh, try to respond in terms of uh, the percentage of employee cost uh, versus the equitable share, that uh, it is sitting at 97%. Yes, we agree. Uh, it is sitting at 97% chairperson, but uh, Manipalto want to highlight the fact that we are not only uh, reliant on equitable share to uh, pay the operational, in fact, to pay the salaries and other operational uh, 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 requirements. We are also using our own funding to to pay for salaries. For now, let me uh, keep it there, chairperson. I should think uh, I've covered almost everything. Right, thank you, honorable members. I don't know if there's any other follow ups. Can we then move to the second uh, set? Oh, the, the, yeah. If there's any other issue that uh, I don't know, uh, is there any other matter that needs to be answered uh, or any follow ups? If not, can we then move to the second set of uh, questions? Thank you, honorable chair. Uh, on question seven, uh, what are you going to do differently to improve the audit uh, outcomes? Uh, chair, um, uh, I, I, I have already indicated that as, as Pumelela, we, during the current uh, term of office, uh, uh, we maintained uh, four unqualified uh, audit outcomes. Uh, our intention, uh, Chair, uh, is to get uh, a, a clean audit. And uh, to get there, 
uh, I will I will ensure that I will ensure constant monitoring of the implementation uh, of the audit action plan. Uh, number two, I will engage the audit committee on the effectiveness of the internal controls put in place by the municipality. I will also analyze and inter interrogate all the reports submitted by the management. Uh, uh, four, I will ensure that monthly reconciliations are performed uh, to identify any deficiencies early in line with the key control metrics. Um, number five, I will ensure that compliance with the laws and the regulations uh, by constantly engaging management on compliance matters. I will also engage the Section 32 Committee and the MPEC to ensure that all unauthorized, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful UIF W expenditure is investigated and uh, cleared. And lastly, I will in ensure that the accounting officer implements consequence management against a uh, poor performing officials and uh, uh, trans trans transgressors. Uh, in a nutshell, that's what I will do uh, to ensure that uh, uh, we improve uh, from unqualified audit outcome to a uh, clean audit uh, chair. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Honorable Mayor. Uh, honorable members, uh, The second questions, honorable members, I'm just trying to check they are allocated to who. <clears throat> honorable Chair. Uh, honorable Majoro. Can I then deal with question number eight? Yes. Have Section 32 committees have been established and are they functional? Uh, Section 32 committee has been established and uh, it is functional, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, the committee is composed of uh, all political parties in, 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 in council. Uh, quarterly Section 52D reports uh, are referred to Section 32 Committee for uh, interrogation. Uh, chair on quarterly on quarterly basis. Thank you, Chair. I think I'm done. Uh, on the questions allocated to me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Mayor. Uh, Honorable Khatebe. <clears throat> it's, 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 it's questions uh, under performance information and non-compliance. Uh, I think it's 10 to 12. No, thanks very much, Chair. Thank you. The AGSA raised material findings on the usefulness and reliability of performance information submitted for auditing. What steps have been put in place to ensure the accurate and complete reporting on the target set in the ITP as well as SDBIP? On non-compliance, uh, numerous non-compliance matters were raised in your audit report. Question 11, why is the adequate supervision not performed to prevent non-compliance? Question 12, non-compliance findings are raised year on year. 
Is municipal staff aware of what is expected from them? If so, why has individuals not been held accountable if their lack of actions resulted in non-compliance? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Khatebe. Uh, the, the municipal manager and the and the CFO. Uh, thank you. Thank you once again, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, in terms of the question uh, that the AXA reported that the audit committee was not appropriately constituted and did not adequately. Okay, that the AXA raised a material finding on the usefulness and reliability of performance information submitted for auditing. What steps have the municipality put in place to ensure the accurate and complete reporting on targets set in the IDP and SDBIP? Chairperson, uh, let me mention that uh, management together with, in collaboration with uh, the PMS manager as well as the manager, the newly appointed manager internal audit, uh, did conduct, conduct a session uh, where all uh, key performance areas were clearly defined and uh, key performance areas were uh, revised as well as um, um, key performance uh, indicators were, 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 were discussed uh, to meet as the smart principle. Let me mention, Chairperson, that all senior managers have signed uh, performance agreements with the municipal manager uh, and the municipal manager as, uh, as well has signed a performance agreement, agreement with the, with the uh, honorable mayor. Uh, this, the SDBIP was uh, done and uh, on quarterly basis, uh, the management does sits uh, where we are going through what was, what, 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 uh, where we are going through our targets and see where we are lacking or where we have uh, progressed well. Uh, and the portfolio of evidence have been, have been uh, recorded for the uh, purpose of uh, the coming uh, AG, AG uh, submissions. Uh, another question, Chairperson, says, why is adequate supervision not performed to prevent non-compliance? Chairperson, like I've uh, highlighted, uh, our SDBIP had some loopholes uh, previously, but after appointment of uh, the internal audit, uh, he came of a good assistance to us, to the municipality, where we have refined our SDBIP and we, we are monitoring our performance on monthly as well as on quarterly basis. I should think now, uh, going forward, everything is going to be uh, all right uh, in terms of that question. Another question, number 12, Chairperson, non-compliance findings are raised year on year. Is municipal, is municipal staff aware of what is expected from them? If so, why has individuals not been held accountable if their lack of actions resulted in non-compliance? Chairperson, uh, in the municipality, we do have uh, the MPEC, which plays an oversight to uh, all the reports uh, that has uh, been tabled to cancel, cancel, and therefore, to date, there are no material findings that uh, that can actually uh, trigger any uh, investigation to individuals in the municipality. But the community, like the municipal, the, the honourable mayor has highlighted, is established uh, for to, to to investigate the issues of. A UIF. Uh, as soon as uh, as any uh, anomaly is uh, encountered, chairperson, that committee will uh, just uh, do its uh, work to investigate uh, all the anomalies that will be coming, and people who are affected will be uh, will be uh, persecuted accordingly. Thank you, chairperson.
No, thank you very much, Mbate uh, Mukwena, uh, the accounting officer acting. Uh, <clears throat> Honorable Tlute. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, on the on the issue of, of non-compliance or disregard for compliance uh, with the legislation, um, uh, the, the Auditor General also pointed out that this municipality or some of the contracts that were awarded at this municipality to bidders were based upon uh, or other based points given for criteria that differed from those stipulated in the original invitation for bidding. So um, when it was advertised, some of these contracts, uh, there was a certain set of criteria and when they were uh, awarded, there was an, uh, an, another set of criteria. I would like to know why this happened. And then, then also some of the contracts were extended or modified without the approval of a properly delegated official. Um, also, why did this happen in this municipality? Thank you, Chair. Uh, honorable, thank you, Honorable Tute, Honorable Ha. Let me just see. Yes, it's Honorable Ha Tebe. Yeah, yeah, yes, thanks very much. Uh, just a follow up on question 10. Uh, I appreciate the, the responses that we've got from uh, the, the management. But having looked at the question, it's simply not saying you haven't achieved where you actually need to review your targets, put them in line and so on. It says the information that has been provided is questionable. It's not reliable. It's inaccurate. That's what this question is saying. And now I want to find out share from uh, uh, the, the senior management. In this regard, are they aware that the misrepresentation to this document in terms of the dimension of fraud and corruption, uh, 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 has some dire uh, consequences. So, because you, you you really cannot set targets when you you get the opportunity to report, you just populate information in as far as the ITP is concerned. I think for us to arrive to a complete and uh, implementation of the master plan, I think this SDBIPs are the mechanisms that assist us actually to see if not we are progressing or not. But you cannot just populate information for the sake of compliance. I think that's the question, Chair. Not necessarily what are you going to do, failure to achieve certain targets or goals. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Honorable Khatebe, uh, the accounting officer. Thanks, yes. <laughs> Chairperson, thank you. Thank you once again. Uh, let me reserve the first question uh, to the CFO for assistance and uh, try to answer on this one of uh, the follow up from question number 10. Uh, like I have highlighted, Chairperson, that uh, we did sit, we did have an engagement as the management and uh, with the collab in collaboration with our. Uh, internal audit manager and PMS manager, uh, also with the assistance of the external audit. Uh, we, 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 we saw that our SDBIP, the targets, as well as the key performance indicators, they are not aligned with the IDP as well as uh, the SDB. Therefore, we try to refine them according to SMART principle so that we can uh, show a synergy between the two documents. That's why the auditor uh, said uh, the information was not uh, accurate. You, 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 if I can pose an example, uh, you will want to measure a project in terms of a, a percentage in terms of expenditure, whereas uh, the project is one uh, does, does have a start and a finish. Uh, you can uh, report on a finish of the all of the project with substantial uh, evidence in our regard uh, according to my example when you are using a percentage in terms of uh, measuring uh, 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 progress 
it is very uh, questionable because of uh, you will be uh, reporting on expenditure, but you don't have a track of exactly where the status of the project is physically. Those are the, the, the loopholes that we saw that I have highlighted that we have managed to sit and then try to, to uh, fine tune our key, uh, key performance indicators as well as our targets so that all our um, uh, key performance areas and our projects can be measurable uh, going forward. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I will give that uh, first question to the CFO to assist. Uh, let, let me let me just check. There is a hand of honourable member. I will give over to you, acting CFO. Is it CFO or acting CFO? Is a CFO chairperson. Oh, sorry, CFO. Sorry. Datel uh, Tuka. Thank you very much, chairperson and members present. I, I hear the responses coming from different officials of this municipality. My question is, Chairperson, to them. I hear they are responding to the questions as put to them today. I want to find out from them, Chairperson, as to what do they do with the report when they receive it? That is, long before they come to a meeting like this one where they are asked pertinent questions for responses. The reason why I'm taking this angle is because a sensitive municipality, which I accept they may be, when it receives an Auditor General's report, I think they go through it to identify or perhaps to familiarize themselves with the investigation of the Auditor General, uh, pointing out their strengths, pointing out where they might have not done so well, and even making some recommendations. Now, my question is, person, when they receive that report, are they waiting to come to a meeting like this and probably try and defend their position? Because I take it that the Auditor General's report is intended to help the municipality identify the problems that they encounter and even propose certain steps that need to be taken to correct that situation that may not be pleasant. I mean, Jefferson, to be here, if, now here, when, when you listen to what the officials of the municipality are saying, it is as if it's a new municipality that is going to start tomorrow. This is what we are going to do. This is what we intend doing. It does not answer what is it that led to the municipality finding itself in this position that was identified or revealed by the Auditor General's report. You see, there is a difference in this. People tend to be defensive and even go to an extent of even failing to realize that they've got a duty to perform. For instance, a simple little question like, did you investigate the wrongdoing in your municipality? And if so, consequence management, what did you do? No, no, we intend, we, we, we will find out. And no, it doesn't work that way, Chairperson. The fundamental position of the municipality is missing. Namely that of accepting that, look, this document coming from the Auditor General's office, it's very, very important because it tells us of where we are as a municipality. They don't even have to wait until they've got to come and appear before a committee like this. They should have done this work right back home. Chairperson, if this is the route we are going to take with our municipalities, you know, every time you listen to them making some presentations, you clearly see and understand why the position of municipalities in the province 
is what it is. You clearly see why we have got this type of performance in the province. And you clearly understand why the communities are up in arms. We are not encouraging that. But you clearly see why are they up in arms? Because of poor service delivery. And how can you get good service delivery when people who are responsible and in charge seem not to be doing the right things? Chairperson, I think we've got a very serious situation with the municipalities in our province of the free state. Something much, much more serious has got to happen. And I don't know what it is because the Office of the Auditor General is the one that has got the muscle to pull the strings tightly for people to start performing. But we are just going over it as, oh, no, it's business as usual. No, we are going to appear there. We'll, we'll make an attempt in answering questions. And at the end of it, no, it's all right. We go back home. We go on as usual. It cannot be business as usual. If we want to perform, if we want to improve the performance in the municipalities, we want to give better service delivery to the people. It can't be business as usual. <clears throat> so please, Chairperson, I, I don't know whether we are on the same page with the municipalities when it comes to what has got to be done. I thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Honorable Datel Tuka. Uh, you, you, you have said it uh, mouthful. Uh, may, may I then give the CFO just to respond to the other question as members were, were just listening to the acting MM. Okay, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, with regard to the findings that related to procurement, uh, the first one being that the functionality used to adjudicate certain tenders was not in line with what was advertised. Uh, what happened in that instance was, at the time when the municipality advertised uh, a tender, it was specifically two tenders. It was one for consulting engineers to be put on the panel, and the other one was for panel of legal services. When we put out the tender, we put out specifications according to which bidders must be. And one of the requirements was for them to provide us the bid amount that they are going to, to charge the municipality for providing the service. But at the time when we did the evaluation and the adjudication, we found ourselves in a situation where for consulting engineers, for instance, some bidders submitted straight figures to say, for this service, I will charge a million rand. Others uh, only quoted a percentage to say our services would be, for instance, 10% for providing the services. Whereas others just referred to their prices as just being in line with extra requirements. So as the municipality at the time, we found that the prices, the way they are structured as per the bid submitted were not comparable because we could not compare a straight figure with a percentage with the other one that just says as per extra guidelines because extra guidelines differs between percentages i think it's between eight percent and fifteen percent so we are not in a position to say what is this bidder going to bid us what is this bidder going to charge us for this service so what we did was we evaluated and adjudicated these tenders based on functionality and everyone who passed functionality was put on the was put on the panel of, of consultants and of, of lawyers from which we would do the service. So the issue that AG had with that was we did not do the final stage that referred to price and preference points, but we had 
highlighted the issue and showed them that this is impossible to apply because of the different way in which the different bidders uh, submitted their prices and percentages. That's where that irregular expenditure that related to us not using the function the functionality and price and preference in terms of triple PFA as it is we did not use the last stage but we eventually we we had our disagreements with AG but eventually we reached an agreement and disclosed the expenditure is irregular and we are in the process of engaging with the accountant general to see how we can clear this irregular expenditure because unless we clear it, it will be regular expenditure in charge for the next two years because these uh, consultants and lawyers are on the panel for a period of three years. With respect to the one that you, 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 you I, I want us, I want you to assist the committee primarily when you are uh, designated with the responsibility of overseeing the finances of the municipality. Uh, that on its own says to me that uh, there is no way that uh, the preference point system would be overlooked, uh, especially when the accounting officer is also aware that uh, in terms of every procurement of any government institutions, there are those policies, uh, whether it's a supply chain policy that regulates the, the procurement, uh, primarily on the matters of the tenders, uh, because by not looking into that or adhering to <clears throat> the triple PF uh, uh, processes, uh, uh, it will then lead to an irregular. So I was not clear. I don't know if honorable members were able to pick up what the CFO was trying to explain, uh, other than to disclose that uh, um, uh, should I say, uh, I don't know what to call it, but 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 I, I don't hear that the, the, the explanation, CFO, uh, uh, how could uh, ended up the, the accounting officer approving such a, a contract uh, where it was clear from the onset that uh, if you can compare the prices, uh, there should be a reason why, uh, if you can compare the, the what you call the consultation fees. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit worried of how you are putting it before us, uh, uh, but you are then accepting that at the end of the day you have agreed with the Auditor General that it will be disclosed as an irregular. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm a little bit worried because this thing of disregarding this regard for compliance with legislation that on its own uh, uh, honorable mayor it's it's a serious grave offense uh, uh, um, and it then puts the accounting officer at another corner because all these things at the end of the day they will then hit to the calling of the accounting officer and that is why you hear what honorable tatel tuka was saying and uh, the appliance of the consequence management and 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 this is where the bone of contingency is uh, in terms of the auditor general uh, and uh, maybe let me also remind honorable members uh, as Ndadel Tuka was saying we we can't put uh, everything on the in on the hands or in the hands of the auditor general whilst we are also empowered by the very same constitution that, a, that empowers the Auditor General. It also empowers us. Chapter 6 of the constitution empowers us. And I think the Chair of Chairs alluded to it earlier when we were discussing 
uh, about the, the, the conduct of municipalities. Uh, we are empowered by the constitution also to be able to take a particular decision, but it is only the methodology that we need to have so that uh, accountability uh, uh, it's been respected in terms of our part. So I'm, I'm, I was just a little bit worried in your answer. And this is what the Honorable Khatebe was saying also. I don't know if you had him when he alluded to how you are answering questions, especially on what the Auditor General has, has, has actually declared on your uh, uh, audit opinion. So, so it then says now, we are hearing this uh, reoccurring, uh, should I call it a, a, a reoccurring disease of, of how the municipalities will always say, no, the Auditor General, not a, it's like you, you don't attend your management meeting and differ at that level. Because once the Auditor General has concluded, even myself uh, as the chair of the portfolio committee can change. The, the opinion. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to say, you know, for the sake of answering, sometimes it does not help at this level. Some of you have taken an oath uh, to, 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 and, and that on its own, it's tantamount to a serious, uh, uh, it's a serious uh, conclusion on our side. So, so I, I just want to put it like that, so that. Let's not just answer for the sake of uh, maybe the chair and the members don't understand finances, so we'll just clarify them in this way. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to say, please, let's get the proper answers uh, so that we are also able to, to hear from your side what actually are you, are you saying. So, so there's also the hand of Honorable Klute Kupomo for chance uh, so that uh, he maybe. Uh, raise something as a, a follow-up. Honorable Kluke. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Now the CFO wants to, to move to the to the whole issue of uh, the the approval of, of, of contacts by the delegated officials as well. Um, I just want to 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 point out the moment I read what what the what the Auditor General stated regarding this issue so there's one set of 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 criteria and then there's another set when when contacts are awarded and i'm not saying this is what happened here but when i see when i read that i i read uh, manipulating contracts and tenders uh, and i'm not saying this is what happened here um so I would like, and 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 the the, the CFO did did say they had a discussion with the with the Auditor General on on, on this issue. Um, I would like to maybe ask the uh, the, the the Auditor General, the the uh, the the senior manager responsible for for this municipality, also to give us guidance on why they why they because the 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 CFO mentioned two contracts. Um, what their approach on this was as well. I would like to hear from them if possible. Thank you. Uh, we we will definitely do that. Uh, Honorable Klute will will also ask uh, the lead of delegation of Auditor General just after the response. Of the Therefore, you can just respond, maybe just to summarize your last part, and then we'll will then <clears throat> request humbly the Auditor General just to give a clarity on what Honorable Klute has just raised. Okay, thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, what, was, what I was trying to do, Chair, with the first point was to try and give uh, the committee the background of what, of what led to the findings. Uh, because at the time when we incurred that expenditure, as management, we felt that we had grounds to proceed in the way that we proceeded. We were of the opinion that we are still in line with legislation. Hence, 
even before we reached a conclusion on the matter. I think the matter to be resolved actually took more than a month just to resolve the matter because we had to source opinions from provincial treasury. We had to source legal opinions as part of the bundle that was submitted to AG to try and support the process that the municipality had followed with regard to that procurement. Hence, I was trying to try and give the background of what, how did it come about that this expenditure uh, was incurred and eventually declared as irregular. Uh, with regard to the second point, Chair, uh, that expenditure actually related to the contract of the consultants used for the preparation of the financial statements. What happened is the consultants were appointed via deviation in the 2018-2019 financial year. And then when our audit for 1819 was finalized on the 30th of June 20, 2020, we found that we could not go on a tendering process, even though AG had declared the expenditure irregular in the past, we could not go in, into a bidding process. We already in the process of compiling financial statements for the new year. Hence, we continued with the contract that was already in place. That's how uh, that expenditure ended up appearing in the audit report as such. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Baba, uh, Baba Lutando, I don't know from the AGSH, uh, who was the senior manager for for Pumelela, uh, just to respond to. Oh, Mr. Mkorod. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, let me start by greeting all the honorable members and all the officials present in the meeting. Uh, Chair, the CFO is spot on in terms of the background that he provided as it relates to that tender. The challenge that we came across there was that, so as part of the procurement process, first there's a, there's a specifications committee that will sit. And in that specifications committee, there is somebody who understands the service that is going to be sourced by the municipality so that they know that in this field, this is how the billing works, this is how the tariffs would work, so that when they set specifications, they don't include the issue of pricing if pricing is not going to be something that is practicable in that particular space. Mm. But the municipality failed at the specification stage to make sure that that happens so that they specify what needs to happen properly. And when the specifications were finalized and the tender was approved and advertised, they included there that they were going to measure price as well as part of the uh, preferential procurement policy framework. And they just did a U-turn in the process with following proper channels because they should have somehow before they went through with those processes, at least contacted the service providers and said, you're not bidding, you're not quoting price consistently. How, please make sure that you price in this particular manner or, or, or any other remedy. Instead of just changing things, doing a U-turn as part of the procurement process and, and thereby contravening the law. So that was the only technicality that gave them a challenge there. They should have came up with some remedy that assisted them to make sure that they do go ahead and measure price. And if price was not consistently uh, bidded by the bidders, they should have found a way of standardizing that so that they don't uh, contravene the procurement uh, legislations. So that's the challenge that we set with. And I think going forward, it is very important that when these tenders are advertised or before they're advertised in the specifications committee, there are people that understand the product that is being sourced or the service how, the, how, how the, 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 the billing will be done in that particular environment. If it's engineering services and they are bound by a certain framework, 
so that that is incorporated in the specifications not to approve specifications in a certain manner and do a U10 when you get to the actual bidding processes. I hope that gives clarity, Chairperson. Thank you. I, I should be the one who says you are spot on because I was worried uh, that when you said the, the CFO was spot on, but I understood when you explained that he was just spot on to explain why the, it ended up to be what it is the outcome of the Auditor General, uh, which if, if you heard me well when I said I was not happy in the manner in which he was just trying to clarify his answer to us. Uh, I should be the one who says you are spot on uh, and I'm happy uh, uh, that uh, you, you, you are helping others uh, it is disregard for compliance with legislation. Uh, that is why Honorable Knute is saying it's a manipulation in a way of process, which for me, it's actually tantamount to corruption, if, if I have to put it in a very raw way. Uh, uh, despite the issue that uh, the CFO uh, was trying to explain in terms of process in terms of uh, 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 how the mistake was done because once you don't follow to the latter the prefer uh, uh, what we call it the preference point system it's part of legislation and you you can you can you can jump uh, other uh, dots you must connect all the dots honorable uh, and thanks, uh, uh, AGSA, for the explanation. No, thanks very much, uh, Chair, for, for the explanation. And, uh, Chair, I don't think we, we call the municipalities just to account and say everything is good. Uh, they have accounted. Uh, this scenario is one of the areas which I think we need to pronounce ourselves very, very clear. I've heard the CFO talking about the advices sought from the, the provincial treasury, uh, as well as uh, at some point they'll have to get an opinion from the account, uh, accountant general. The information before the committee is very clear, Chair, that they did not do what they supposed to in terms of the legislation. And I don't hear them saying one of the proper recourses is to terminate the contract. Because really, uh, 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 the, the Auditor General uh, made it very clear to them to say, look, if you persist on this matter, you're going to uh, 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 be audited, particularly on this contract, as the irregular for a period of three years. And the, the situation cannot be acceptable just like that. Because we are simply saying, and it is our, our wish that municipalities must improve in their audit outcomes. So, so, so it, it cannot, really, to me, I would be satisfied when they're saying part of what, to, uh, for, for, for as a part of the redress, we, we, we're going to really see ways and means to terminate the contract so that they do not in future uh, uh, got to be audited irregularly on the particular, the same matter that has been tabled before us. I think uh, uh, that, that's my take. We, we've got this situation uh, uh, in one of the, the provincial government, I think the Department of uh, uh, Police, Roads and Transport, where some contracts were had to be terminated in as far as the audit outcome is concerned, having reflected the irregularities in terms of the law. So it, it can be that they forge forward, having been advised to do something about that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Khadebe. Honorable Confirin. Chair, just a short input. I agree with all the other members. Uh, but what is concerning to me is the fact that, and I've, we've heard it from a, uh, another municipality on Friday as well, where they said that uh, they do not agree with the Auditor General, and at some stage they just accept the, the qualification as irregular and then move on. 
and I think that's that's not the attitude that we we want. That okay, uh, we've been uh, reprimanded here. Uh, we're just going to move on just to get this over and done with. I think there should be consequences for these actions, and and we don't see that at any municipality. Thank you, Chief. Yeah, yo, that's 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 that's, that's very very serious, uh, Honourable Panther, and what you are saying. Hence, in, in, in our opening of the meeting, <clears throat> I've also raised this issue of resolutions. Our resolutions must be taken to council and be adopted by council so that we, we, we take the speakers accountable to our resolutions before they could answer. We, we must be able to ask them whilst that is now part of their resolution, because if they don't do that, it means they will be disregarding this process, uh, primarily because they know that uh, another five years will come. The same questions will be asked for the next coming five years. Now, it must be our, our recommendations uh, that will then go straight to the office of the premier, to the, uh, the COPTA, which deals with municipalities and ensure that uh, all those uh, resolutions are being adopted by council uh, and be noted by council and be adopted by council. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure the introduction and the background will explain to them as they take this item to council why these matters should be uh, adopted by council. Uh, I think it should be part of, of accountability. And that is why I've requested uh, uh, Advocate CIFO to at least guide us on, on how that must be implemented. Uh, uh, Treasury is also here. Uh, it will also agree with us uh, 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 on a particular approach because uh, these resolutions will never be respected. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Members. Uh, <clears throat> can we then move to Honorable Meko to then give us, and I'm sure all these issues have been noted. Uh, Honorable Meko? Thanks, Chair. Um, Chair, my, my question is directed uh, between uh, question 13 to question 15, I want to believe. The first set of questions arising from unauthorized, irregular, as well as fruitless and wasteful expenditure. The indication that we are making is that according to the Auditor General, investigations were not done into instances of unauthorized, regular, as well as fruitless and useful expenditure. The question we are asking as a committee is that uh, did, did uh, the matter be escalated about the absence of investigations to cancel? The second question is on the distribution losses. The indication we are making is that the municipality incurred huge water and electricity distribution losses. Of course, owing to leakages, best water pipes, line losses, tempering and theft. Have the municipality investigated the distribution losses and the uh, are there reports to substantiate these losses which were disclosed in the financial statement? The last question, Chair, is on the contingencies. Our statement is that the municipality is the defendant in various claims against it. The question we're asking, what is the total claims against the municipality? And what does it relate to? In other words, what what are, what is that for? Those claims. Thank you very much, Mdulas Tulu. Those are the set of questions allocated to myself. Thank you very much, Honorable Meku. Thank you very much. Uh, the, <clears throat> we are heading to the conclusion. Uh, let me then give over to Municipal Manager, Acting and the CFO to respond. Thank you. <clears throat> may, 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 maybe. Uh, I, I must also uh, input just two questions uh, so that I don't come in again. 
uh, which will then go to the chairperson of MPEG. I don't know whether the chairperson of MPEG is here uh, or it's a share services, uh, Honorable Mayor. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 because <clears throat> I, I needed the 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 MPEG chair to, to respond to to other matters and also if there is also the chair of the audit committee my question would be what, what role does the audit the, the audit committee plays in the entire general uh, 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 runnings of, of of the municipality and how often do they have their own management meeting if, if i may put it uh, and when do they take matters of their reports to council when uh, and, and is it as and when they are done with reports? Is it quarterly? Is it monthly? Uh, how 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 is the how does the the, the 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 chair of the committee of audit see the municipality changing in terms of the good governance? Is there any uh, hope? Or is it is it is it fine? Uh, is the auditor audit committee happy with with how everything is done? I, I think that those are the few questions that I actually wanted to be answered after the MM should have responded and the CFO to the questions of the honourable Meko. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson, for the questions. Uh, Question number 13, uh, let me uh, mention, uh, Chairperson, that uh, the list of all uh, procurement that are following within the UIF, uh, yes, they have, have been uh, escalated or tabled to Council, but to date there, there has never been any investigation that uh, Council uh, drew its impact uh, where, 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 where was undertaken. Uh, in terms of question number 14, uh, the losses uh, incurred, a huge losses incurred uh, as a result of water and electricity. In terms of electricity, I've highlighted earlier on, Chairperson, that uh, we, we have uh, installed split meters in uh, our area of supply, which is Warden. Uh, ESCOM also assists in terms of quarterly audits of uh, households that are tampering with electricity. Uh, those that are not uh, consistently buying and uh, they, they, they can be able to to, to depict them uh, on their system and uh, action is is, is actually uh, uh, put in place uh, immediately in terms of water losses uh, we are all aware as a municipality that uh, we have losses uh, both on distribution and on uh, 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 reticulation now, uh, we have uh, undertaken to do assessments. We have started in Friere, where we, we have um, conducted the, what you call the water conservation, water demand management strategy, uh, which is on emphasis to both cost recovery and uh, non-revenue water. Uh, the, the strategy gives us the clear picture on what is happening underground in terms of the pipes, uh, what is happening in terms of our uh, storage facilities, where are, are we experiencing the leakages in terms of water. Uh, and it gives us the strategies that we as the managers can be able to plan during our IDP reviews and uh, do something about uh, them. Uh, let me highlight that uh, we have concluded the, 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 the strategy for Friere. We are also trying to solicit assistance from our sister departments to assist in terms of funding to also do that uh, strategies for our, our other two towns. Uh, as soon as we have all the strategies, we will be able to know where our problems are and we will be able to uh, plan for them uh, for, for, for remedying those problems. Uh, we have uh, realized in Friede, based on that plan, that we also losing more water uh, in the households themselves, uh, where we, we, we don't have water meters, water portable meters, 
uh, where we can't be able to read the meters. But you'll find out that inside their bathrooms, uh, there they, 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 they are leakages, 24-hour leakages that uh, are wasting our water. Uh, that we need to do something about as well. Uh, based on whether we disclose those losses uh, in our AFSs, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask the CFO to, to assist in that. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, with regard to whether we've investigated the distribution losses and whether we have reports to substantiate the amounts that we disclose on the annual financial statements, I think the acting MM has already touched on whether we've done investigations, but part of the investigations that we are uh, also undertaking uh, with regard to electricity, he and the acting MM had already touched on installation of meters on our on all our properties to ensure that we measure own consumption. Because unless we measure own consumption, that consumption is regarded as part of the distribution losses. And we are also in a process of determining cost-reflective tariffs in relation to electricity. Uh, ESCOM is in the process of assisting us with a cost of supply study so that we are in a position to apply for cost-reflective tariffs from NERSA because during winter months, we realized that our tariffs are the same throughout the years. Whereas ESCOM's tariff change with the seasons. In winter, ESCOM's tariff is higher as compared to the municipalities. Hence, we find ourselves in a position where in winter, we are struggling to service the current uh, account because the amount charged by ESCOM is too high compared to ours. And with respect to water, uh we our investigations have shown that dws continues charging the municipality on an incorrect tariff we are regarded as getting our water from the Lesotho highlands whereas we are actually not getting our water from there and the tariff for getting water from the Lesotho highlands is higher than the tariff that we are supposed to be charged for where we get our water sources. And through, through the analysis of the monthly DWS invoices, we've realized that DWS is not actually charging us based on actual consumption. Most of the time they are just using estimates because the, the quantities that they are charging us on a monthly basis is almost the same throughout the years. And it's impossible for any institution to use a service, the same quantities in each and every month. So that's one of the issues highlighted by our investigations. And we are also in the process of reconciling all GWS accounts. In the past, we had challenges with getting DWS accounts, but we've now managed to access their portal where we are now able to get all their invoices from inception up to now. So what we are busy with now is reconciling all those invoices and statements from inception up to now to determine the exact figure that we actually owe DWS. Because on some instances, we've identified that a closing balance for this month is not the same as an opening balance for the following month, where you find there's a two million difference between the closing balance and the closing balance from the previous month to the opening balance in the current years, in the current month. So we are busy with that reconciliation to ensure that one, GWS bills us correctly for the consumption that we we consume throughout the month. Two to ensure that the GWS balance that appears in the financial statements is the correct one having accounted for the incorrect tariff that they've been charging us, as well as 
a movement that they cannot substantiate how it came about. That's in essence on the investigations on the distribution losses. The reports are available as we prepare financial statements. We prepare working papers and reports that support the amounts that are reflected on our financial statements with respect to distribution losses. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me just interject. Honorable uh, yeah. No, Chair, let, 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 let the uh, municipal manager continue and I'll ask when he's finished. I was just raising a hand for a follow-up question, but let him continue on this. I would like to hear more. Thank you. All right. You may continue, Stefo. You may continue, Stefo. Okay. Uh, with regard to the last question on contingencies, the... The amount of contingencies disclosed on our financial statements it was five cases amounting to 6.8 million. Of those five cases, uh, four have been resolved. Only one remains that related to 2.5 million between the municipality and Khato. Uh, in essence, the first case related to that was between vessels and Pumelela related to a fire outbreak from our landfill site. Uh, a settlement was reached with the uh, plaintiffs, whereby an amount of 900,000 in total was paid for the damages after a court order. And then there was a case that related to VIP consulting versus the municipality that related to an old appointment that was previously done by the old administration. Uh, an agreement was reached and a settlement was reached with the uh, with VIP and the matter was moved was taken off the roll. And then there was a case between the municipality and Rubex. The case was settled with the assistance of DWS because it related to the Warden Dam that was fin funded by DWS and it, the claim related to a variation order. So the variation order was cleared with DWS and the matter was settled. And then the other matter that was settled related to Pumelela versus one of his employees, which is Tabokhati. It was a labor dispute it related to unfair labor practices it relates it started from 2013 and was only concluded in the current financial year and a settlement was reached on that as we speak there's only one case that is that remains that is the one between Kato project and Pumelela and the matter is still before court thank you chair uh, Honorable Klute, uh, in fact, I've also, it's fine, you, you can come in, Honorable Klute, it's fine. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, we, we, the, 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 question, the answers we received basically spoke about um, the the issue with the DWS and and, and uh, where the water comes from. Um, if, if the municipality do not get water from from the, the Lesotho Highland project, uh, that's that's how I understood the answer. Then where do they get from? That's one question. Uh, the next question is, the, the, the initial question was, do you have reports to substantiate the losses you disclose in your financial statements? Um, I would like to know, do they have those reports? And I, I would like to see those reports uh, personally. And then the last question regarding the landfill site um, contingency. Um, are all the, the landfill sites in, in this municipality, Pumalela, operating according to legislation? Because that's important. Um, so that's my last question. Thank you, Chair. Uh, that is one issue I wanted to talk about, the landfill sites issue. Uh, Honorable uh, Van Fering. Chair, thank you very much. Not a, it's not a follow-up on this, but I, I'm going to pose my question and then afterwards they can answer that if it's fine. 
It's uh, and, and hopefully I, I I didn't miss this. It's on the conditional grounds. I see here that uh, there's a lot of conditional grants. We're talking about the municipal infrastructure grant, water service infrastructure grant, regional bulk infrastructure grant, financial management grant, the integrated national electrification grant, EPWP grant that that was not evaluated within two months afterwards. Can I just explain to us what that what they should have evaluated and how this impacted on this these grants and what it means for the municipality? Thank you, Chief. Yeah, the the issue of grants. Uh, can you respond to that and then respond to the others? Uh, especially when we have been told that uh, it was not, they were not evaluated within two months after the end of the financial year. Is it because of underspending? Uh, is it because of what? Uh, Uh, okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, with regard to the issue of the conditional grants, I should first mention to the committee that our conditional grants were spent in full. The question was not on whether underspending or on anything. The grants were spent in full. The issue related to uh, us perform, uh, submitting performance information based on each grant in line with the plans the implementation plans for the year to say the implementation plan outlined what has to happen per project per grant for the financial year and then at the end of the financial year two months thereafter we were supposed to submit performance plan that evaluates that implement the implementation in line with the implementation plan. That's the part that we we had not submitted to the AG, the performance reports where we actually analyze the performance in line with those uh, grants. But in the current year, we are already in the process. We've already done the assessment up to now so that by the end of August, we are in a position to uh submitted performance reports for each and every grant. Uh, CFO, does your expenditure uh, move separately from the the, 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 the performance of the project? How, how do you support the two? Because in my understanding, in terms of the project plan, there's no way that uh, you can deal with the expected times the work of the ground is not there uh, because you would want to push the grants. Uh, uh, just, I just want to get clarity whether you use a for implementation plan. Okay, thanks, Chair. Uh, in terms of the spending, we spent according to the implementation plans as set out. But what the what informa information that has to be included in the performance uh, report also touches on the impact that the expenditure has done. For instance, if you are installing bulk water, part of the business plan outlines how many households would be impacted by that. And that gets to included in the non-financial performance report. That's the report that was not submitted. Yet. All right. Okay. Uh, Honorable Tlute, uh, I'm you. sure there are also other questions that you were not answered. We'll come back to you yes. after Honorable Tlute. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Now, just quickly, again, I would like, without uh, wasting the, the, the committee's time too much, because this is an important question, uh, in the sense that it's one thing to spend grants, but uh, in my mind, and, and maybe the, the AG can help us here, in my mind, the whole question of evaluation is to ensure value for money. Um, the, the, that's how I see it. Um, and, and, and why is this process so important? So maybe the AG can just guide us on this so, so we understand it and that uh, the municipality understands it as well. Thank you, Chair. 
I don't know if the Auditor General has also observed that uh, you, the municipality sometimes would always appoint. Then after appointing, uh, when you go to the actual ground where the project is being implemented, you'd always found that there is nothing on the ground, but the, the expenditure has been incurred. So this is what Honorable Kute is saying, but in this instance, uh, the municipality, the CFO is, is at least clarifying to us that no, no, in terms of non uh, financial performance, uh, that's when the, but, but I think we will just get a clarity on, on the just general observation of the Auditor General based on that. Maybe the CFO and the MM could answer uh, the issue of the left field sites, which was also asked by Honorable Clute. And then uh, I did not get an indication whether we have the chair of the MPEC and uh, whether we also have the chair of the audit committee uh, so that the questions which were posed, uh, if they are not here, uh, uh, maybe the mayor or the speaker would just say something about them. And then we give over to the mayor to give us a closing remark. I think it took us very long. And to Melela, it's not actually a, a big municipality. We thought we'd just take lesser time uh, uh, because we we are also worried about Pumelela is one of the municipalities that uh, the, 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 the the committee is, is very worried because it's a very small uh, municipality but there is no revenue base uh, um, uh, no uh, you know economical activities and uh, the, the, the equitable share it's not adequate uh, uh, so we'll never have uh, development in that municipality, provided that we fight this 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 battle together uh, until we achieve this uh, new formula, if it will be there, on on the equitable share uh, for for local sphere of government. Yeah, MM. Uh, thank you, thank you once again, Chairperson. Uh, in terms of uh, the landfill site and the, and the litigation that we uh, encountered as the municipality, let me highlight the fact that the case was uh, won. Uh, Chairperson, am I audible? Yeah, you, you were breaking, uh, but now we, we, we are hearing. Yes, I'm saying that, that the farm that litigated municipality was 500 meters away from our landfill site. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm saying that uh, the case was won based on uh, the technicalities that we could not overcome as the municipality. But uh, in terms of our landfill sites, uh, we conducted the so-called uh, integrated solid waste management uh, plan. Uh, we have we now know all the status of all our landfill sites. Uh, we have relocated the one in Friere, which was not licensed, into a licensed uh, uh, landfill site. We we are all aware of our shortcomings uh, in terms of uh, the solid waste from the generation from each generation from the doorstep until uh, the landfill. Uh, we have recommendations in the plan that again will help us as managers to plan uh, on them and then uh, 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 work on them in, in the coming future. That is it from us, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, accounting officer, can, can I get an indication whether the audit chair you have, uh, is, is, is he or she present? Uh, the, the chairperson of MPEC, I, I remember that it's a share services, if I remember. I uh, I don't seem to, uh, audit, the chairperson of the external audit, he is he, but I don't, I don't see them here. Uh, but the chairperson of the MPEC is here. I do. No, no, it's not here. It's, it's, it's the honourable mayor who was actually uh, of the chairperson of the MPEC. An audit, an audit committee. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. But, uh, we we want to. I'll check with the mayor now. As as she wrap, as sorry as he wraps up.
Uh, I just saw the hand of Honorable Huda. Thank you, uh, MM. Uh, just, just a quick qu request, uh, Chairperson. I did ask whether the the reports for the uh, the distribution losses uh, were compiled. So I would like to request if they are that they'd uh, be distributed between between the committee members. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that is that is very very important. I, I think. Uh, the, the discrepancy that the MM was actually highlighting, I mean, sorry, the CFO, in terms of the the charges uh, on the water losses by the the DWS, uh, that information is very key. Uh, as, as Honorable Kute is saying, we need to have that. Uh, if you can send it to us, because the intervention, uh, if there was an intervention between yourselves and Copter, uh, because they can't charge you with estimates. I don't understand it myself because then it means uh, most of the revenue monies will be going to estimates or else are not accurate. Uh, and, and municipalities will always keep on paying on estimates. So so I think we'll, we will have to raise this matter to, 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 to the Department of Water and Sanitation. Uh, they will also have to respond to us uh, how how do they deal with such a, a, a serious matter of charging a uh, municipality with estimates uh, whilst we know that they are controlling most of the big dams around your own vicinities. So, so if we can get that information, uh, we'd appreciate. I'm sure the committee coordinators will also interact with the accounting officer on that. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, May I then give over to Honorable uh, Executive Mayor to give us a closing remarks. And uh, 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 we then, maybe before the closing, before the closing remarks, sorry, Honorable Mayor, uh, Mayor Chekhi, we don't have too much of the results. Can you run over them quickly for us? Uh, it's just for set of, of, of the resolutions uh, so that members could just hear. Thank you very much. <clears throat> maybe, maybe if, if, is it possible for, is it possible for, for Ndate Tabo to flash it on the screen whilst you are trying to, to read them for us? Uh, flash it on the screen for us. Uh, Maybe in the meantime, whilst we are still waiting for that, before you close, uh, Majoro, the audit, the audit committee uh, chair was putting up a high uh, in terms of your your municipality audit committee. Thank you, uh, honourable chair. Uh, honourable chair, the invitation was extended to both. The chairperson of the MPEC, it's a shared, uh, both uh, the MPEC and the audit committee are shared uh, services. So the, 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 the invitation was extended to both uh, chairpersons, but it's as if they are not part uh, of the meeting. So is it, is it the district? Yes, yeah, the okay. district, it's a district shared uh, uh, services. We will. I will have to uh, directly communicate with them. I, I just to check why they were not here. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mejeki, are you winning? Hi, uh, Chair. I've sent them to the table IT, but I have them here in front of me. I don't know if Chairperson wants to. Yeah, you. Me to just browse through them quickly. You may continue while the table is trying to reflect them. Okay, Chair. Uh, under Fumelela, we have Resolution 14 of 2018. It goes as follows. The municipality must provide progress report on the water reticulation project within 30 days after tabling of the report in the House. That was then, Chair. The committee noted that the huge unauthorized expenditure was informed by the compliance with SCM processes and prescriptions. Furthermore, the municipality as the implementing agency for Department of Water and Sanitation failed to complete the new dam 
which was a multi-year project and a regional bulk infrastructure grant. So then the, po the portfolio committee resolved as follows, that the municipality must ensure that they second a councillor to represent or serve in the shared service of MPEG, that proper internal control measure measures must be put in place to improve monitoring and evaluation on projects which impacts negatively on service delivery, that a Section 32 committee must be established to IFW expenditure cases since 2004, and that the accounting officer must ensure that strict credit control measures are put in place in the warden area and that evidence of collection must be provided on a monthly basis to COCTA, Provincial Treasury, as well as to this committee, Public Accounts and Finance. Chairperson, uh, can I pause there before we go to the 2019 resolution? I don't know if members maybe want to ask questions on those first. Uh, no, let's let's go. That is why I wanted them to to appear on the oh there there it comes. Yeah, let's let's come to the last one. Thank you, Chair. It's resolution 14 of 2019. The portfolio committee noted with concern that the current liabilities exceeded current assets by 218 million. That amount, yes, Chair, just round it off. 218 million. Furthermore, the municipality owed ESCOM 117 million and the water board 63 million, which are long overdue. Mm -hmm. The portfolio committee resolved it as follows. The municipality must timelessly develop and strictly monitor the audit action plan. The municipality must fill vacancies in the performance management section. Number three, the municipality must perform regular bank reconciliations and physical asset verifications. The last one, the municipality must ensure that unauthorized, fruitless and wasteful and irregular expenditure are properly investigated. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Magic. We did not see you. Maybe you, you are hiding somewhere, but it's fine. You have done a good job. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the, the two resolutions, uh, the, the the resolutions 14 of 2018, as the mayor is going to summarize, we 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 are just expecting the the answers for that, uh, so that members can get the follow-ups on on what has been raised and or as as a reminder to the the, the leadership of the institution, which is Kumelea. Uh, the resolution 14 of 2018, uh, Honorable Executive Mayor, it also talks about the the multi-year project for regional balance uh, infrastructure grant, which uh, can you just uh, mute your mic, Zilani? Teko, 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 Mukuje, please unmute your mic. Mute your mic, sorry. Thank you. Uh, the, the, if you go to the question of Honorable Fanfiren when he wanted the clarity, on the conditional grant. Uh, this is one issue that has also been raised by the Auditor General on the Regional Bulk infra Infrastructure Grant. And we, we were told during that time, when this, this resolution was made, we, we were under the, the information that the municipality, as the implementing agency for the Department of Water uh, and Sanitation, failed. Uh, to complete the new dam. So I want to check whether the, 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 in terms of the concern of the Auditor General, is, is she still responding to the same uh, 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 regional bulk infrastructure grant? Or this one, it's, it's, it's different. It's another year financial year. I just want to check because now the CFO uh, under oath has just said to us, uh, 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 honestly, we, we have utilized every piece of 
of send uh, for 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 the for, for all the conditional grant in our municipality. So I'm not sure whether because we did not receive any response from 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 the set resolution uh, by the municipality whether they, it's done uh, whether it's not done whether it's but now uh, we are picking up from the auditor general uh, that uh, those grant in terms of reporting they were not reported to uh, 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 in the in the in the in the uh, I mean within two months after the end of the financial year. Uh, so 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 and the the, the resolution of of 14 of of, of 2019 uh, uh, i'm sure if it has been it has been done will 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 we'll, we'll be will be getting response and that is why uh, honorable mayors all of you uh, with with all respect we, we we really want the accounting officers who honor and respect the the the, the work of 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 of, of of different institutions uh, because uh, some of us we did not force ourselves to be here and it is not nice when we always remind the accounting officers that we are here because of the constituents the same people who who put us in this parliament are the same people who are always asking us why there is no service delivery out there and that it is primarily because of the attitude uh, the attitude of the accounting officers who will never even write and respond to to us and and that it, it shows that uh, uh, most of the mayors are not being respected by their account their own accounting officers uh, uh, may, maybe the accounting officers they forget that the most of the uh, councillors whether opposition or not uh, is their employer uh, in terms of the the legal legal framework. Uh, my counselor, all counselors are employer of yourselves. Uh, so if you are not going to listen to them and you are not going to comply and you are going to disregard the the legislation, uh, then 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 we are in a crisis. Uh, we are in a serious crisis. Uh, so so I just hope uh, that uh, uh, by responding to these resolutions and any other matter. Uh, uh, that is why the National Treasurer is not even afraid to tell this committee that the uh, municipalities of the free state will not even bother to, to give reports on, on conditional grant. Uh, I don't know what kind of a, a, an institutions we are running. Uh, and, and that is not how you run government. Uh, uh, government is not a tax shop. Uh, uh, you you have all the, the legal frameworks everywhere, pieces of legislation. You have your policies that you need to adhere to. Uh, uh, so so I just hope and pray uh, that uh, our accounting officers could understand what is their role, because I can tell you now, uh, Executive Mayor, some of your officials uh, of municipalities. It might not be your officials of Pumelela, but they, they don't even understand their role of judicial responsibility in terms of the MFMA. Uh, uh, they, they don't even know what is their role. Uh, uh, so, 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 so it's important that we, we really emphasize this thing. But Honorable Dante Lituka said it, he, does, he doesn't know what is it that we can do to enforce or, or we will definitely enforce uh, uh, certain resolutions that will compel accounting officers uh, to account. Uh, and, 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 and it is not our, our spirit of working to chase uh, officials as if uh, they don't know what, what, what role they should play. But in, in other circumstances, we'll be forced to to really uh, use a muscle a little bit to to put uh, more authority uh, on, on on making sure that our people uh, of this province do benefit uh, by uh, bringing service uh, delivery which is the core function of municipalities in terms of the constitution if municipalities uh, are just going to pay employees uh, what is the use? Because you are now 
uh, undermining the very same constitution of this country. That is the core functions of municipalities to bring service delivery to the people. Uh, why should we employ employees whilst we can't even uh, do service delivery on the ground? And, and what is worse, it is when the national government is trying to improvise uh, by giving, you know, your grants uh, and, and these grants are not being used again, uh, then it, it's, it's very sad. Uh, so so uh, uh, please, uh, Honorable Mayor, as you close, you will then respond to the two resolutions. Uh, thank you very much. And then we'll then go to the second municipality. Uh, but before we go to the second municipality, I would just give a five minute stretch or relaxing of of members. Thank you, Honorable uh, Datantau, the Executive Mayor. Thank you, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, maybe before I make my uh, closing remarks, uh, can I ask uh, uh, the CFO to clarify uh, the Arabic grant uh, 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 that you spoke, spoke about? Uh, I think you will be able to uh, clarify the con uh, confusion uh, uh, in this meeting. Uh, CF CFO? Thank you. Thank you, Majoro. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mayor. Uh, in terms of uh, the Arabic project, the, the, the construction of water scheme, uh, which is water and uh, dam in Warden. Let me try to uh, mystify what, what really happened. Uh, I need to confirm that the project co was completed, uh, the construction of the dam. Uh, what was the delay uh, at that time? It was the fact that uh, there was a disagreement between the contractor and the municipality through the consultant in terms of uh, the additional work that was that was uh, highlighted in the construction of the dam, which caused uh, the variation order that uh, the CFO talked about. That uh, the variation order was settled and the dam was completed. Uh, that is it about the construction of the dam. The project of the construction of the dam was completed and the, the, the disagreement and the dispute uh, that was part of and the payment was done uh, for additional work that was approved at that time. Uh, thank you. MM, can I, can I, I'm sorry to interject. The, the issue of the variation order was it the, the the variation order which was approved by council or which, which variation which was it is it between the the consultant and and the contractor or or, or, or what 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 was the issue i mean between the department of of w uh, dws uh, chairperson let me highlight that uh, we normally in the local government uh, use uh, general conditions of contract, GCC, yes. Uh, yes. in dealing with our uh, contracts. Yes. But uh, this project was, was a multi-dimensional project where other uh, versions of contracts were used in, uh, like uh, uh, NEC, NEC, which gives uh, the consultants the authority to approve uh, such a, a additional works. In that instance, the consultant did approve according to the contract that was uh, signed uh, because they had an authority, but the municipality wanted to get all substantiating documentation uh, in that uh, particular extension of work. Most of the work was submitted, but there were, there were uh, outstanding ones. That, that was uh, the, the part of the disagreement that we will never agree with anything if we don't have a substantial documentation that, that talks to, to that particular uh, extension. Uh, that is why I'm saying later after uh, soliciting all the information, uh, the, the matter was uh, uh, 
concluded and then the contractor was paid. You know, the reason why I was asking that I actually wanted to get that clarity. Uh, remember, I was the executive mayor in my first work. So I think I understand you very clear, uh, but I wanted to ask on the issue of the variation order. Uh, what I'm ex getting explanation from yourself is that it was approved by the consultant. Uh, I want to check if the council did approve that variation order. And if not, I'd also want to take this matter through the Auditor General because it should have been an oversight uh, in, in the understanding. So if maybe you can put that in writing without even explaining it now, and let's let me also get the the, the 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 approval of that consultant because there is no way that a grant any extension of 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 work must be ratified by the council in terms of the variation order because it deals with monetary value which then that money uh, in terms of the conditional grant policy uh, it needs to be guided through. So, so I would also appreciate if we can get that in right in, 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 in as a report on how the variation order was then being made. Because I also want in our own one-on-one -on -one with Auditor General to raise these matters uh, because uh, uh, this is one area that I think uh, something it's not happening in the way that uh, things should be done. Uh, thank you for that. I think I'm, I'm covered. Thank you. We can then give over to the mayor. No, no, thank you, uh, honorable uh, chair. Honorable chair, uh, I don't want to waste your time uh, any further. Uh, but I will do as you requested that I, uh, I respond to the two uh, resolutions that were not uh, responded to uh, by by the municipality. Uh, Honorable Chair, I can confirm or commit uh, ourselves uh, that uh, within a, a two weeks, a two resolutions will be responded to uh, by 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 the municipality. Uh, I will make sure that the accounting officer uh, 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 submits a, a written responses uh, uh, <clears throat> to yourselves. Uh, immediately she is back uh, from uh, a sick leave. Uh, and then, Chair, on the other two issues that I want to talk to, uh, we really want to ask for your uh, intervention. Uh, one is the uh, DWS uh, account. Uh, the, the CFO talked to earlier on. Uh, uh, and also uh, indicated that as Pumelela municipality, we are not uh, drawing water from uh, the Lesotho Highlands uh, uh, water scheme. But apparently uh, in 2000, uh, the then uh, uh, municipal manager signed a, a contract binding the municipality as if uh, we are uh, benefiting from uh, Lesotho uh, Highland uh, uh, Water Scheme. Uh, in actual fact, the, the three towns in Pumedela, each town has got a, a, a dam. There are two uh, dams in Friede, there are two in Warden, and then oh, Friede is three. Uh, Friede is three a uh, warden is two, and then uh, uh, there is one dam, uh, our own dam, uh, which were built out of uh, uh, taxpayers' money and uh, not uh, uh, funded by a, a national government. So that's where that's where we are getting uh, uh, water from. So 
in 2018-19, a delegation from uh, a, a, a Department of Water and Sanitation visited the municipality. They investigated uh, 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 the dam in, in, in all our dams, and there was an agreement uh, that we, we are not benefiting from the Soto Highland uh, Water Scheme. And our account uh, then, I think it was in the region of uh, 40 million, it was reduced to uh, 15 million, uh, which was due uh, uh, to be paid by the municipality. But unfortunately, the same of uh, the officials who visited the municipality uh, in 2018-19 uh, uh, left the, uh, the department and the new officials then reinstated uh, the old uh, account. Uh, 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 so hence I, I am requesting your intervention as the committee uh, uh, to assist us uh, to resolve this matter. And then lastly, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, the land, the municipal land around Friede, uh, it was it was taken over uh, by province. Uh, even the land outside uh, the Estina uh, 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 farm, uh, as we speak, uh, the municipality can't implement a, a project. Uh, from time to time, we turn our way. A potential investors like this morning, whilst I was in the meeting, I got a call. A, 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 an investor wanted to put a, a factory uh, in Friede that will create jobs. But the problem uh, 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 around Friede is that uh, the municipality is not, uh, uh, we are not in uh, a title holder of the land as it was taken uh, over by uh, a province. And the process of uh, retaining uh, the land uh, is taking uh, time, uh, which is costing us uh, 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 in terms of uh, development uh, uh, and job creation uh, project. So we will appeal uh, to the committee also to assist us uh, to get uh, our land back so that we can uh, 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 utilize it uh, to enhance uh, the economy of the area. Chair, uh, on that note, I will, on behalf of the municipality, like to thank uh, yourself um, and your committee uh, for, for affording us uh, this opportunity. Uh, I normally say, uh, as and when we attend your uh, uh, meetings, uh, it, it, it is like a... a, a a learning. Uh, we have learned a lot, and, and I hope uh, my officials will uh, 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 implement uh, uh, your what you, you had advised uh, uh, them to do uh, during this session. So thank you very much for uh, the opportunity given again. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Mayor Dadimutawun. Uh, we, we will definitely take further that matter of the land. We are a public account committee also. We deal with non-financial uh, matters uh, in this committee. Uh, this is one area that most of the people don't understand what public accounts, what is the meaning of public account. Uh, 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 and it is important that uh, we, we intervene at that level, uh, especially when you speak of invest, investors. Uh, the reason why our municipalities and our areas, honorable members, are not getting developed, it's primarily because of officials who might be having interest, I don't know, or who might not understand the legal frameworks of implementing uh, these issues of whoever who wants to buy land or whoever wants to make business in every municipality. And every time when I talk about these things, uh, people uh, think that uh, I'm bragging. I'm not bragging, we are sharing. What I understood in every platform of every different meetings, uh, that's where we learn on how other people are doing matters and that's how we learn how people are, are dealing with the pieces of legislation. And, and we share common uh, 
practices um, uh, that are informed by many brains. Um, uh, and I can tell you now, uh, whether people are saying what or they say what, uh, if you go to that small Anyana mall which was built in Malutia Pofu, we had a problem with officials who wanted to say that mall must pay a particular rate and taxes. And at that time, we refused. We said, for the sake of having development in the town, we are not a profit-making municipality. We will go to council, we will inform the council, we will change or rescind any uh, of our own decisions which were made to suit this type of investment in the town. of a 410 million development. Uh, because officials will always tell you, mayors, that no, uh, this mall is going to pay rates and taxes of 650. Uh, uh, and you look at the background of the area. Uh, 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 so the better thing is to have Misebeti uh, Beting, development shops must be there, people must be employed, because government can swallow or employ everybody on the streets. So I'm, I'm just raising this matter primarily because I'm hearing what the Honorable Mayor is saying. Uh, uh, sometimes development don't happen uh, primarily because officials are there and officials will determine on how they will take steps because they know that councillors cannot intervene in such process uh, in, in tenders, in what one. Uh, but interference is something else. Uh, it's, it's not dealing with uh, uh, interference, intervene, interference, uh, two distinctions. So, so thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mayor. Uh, the time, uh, and I want to thank all of your delegation, the Speaker, uh, the Chief Whip, uh, and, and everybody, MM and the Acting MM and the CFO. Uh, the time is, uh, my, my time piece is saying it's 40 minutes after 12 o'clock. And it says 20 minutes to one. So thank you very much. Uh, we will then come after five minutes. Can we just take a five minute break, which will be 12.45. Thank you. Thank you, members. Dr. Tawo or Mekanyisa, can you just indicate that we are on break? Thank you very much.
Welcome back, uh, honorable members. Welcome back, the executive mayors who are here with us. The, the MEC, uh, Honorable uh, Brown, she did indicate that she had to leave our meeting today. And thank you very much, Honorable MEC, for gracing uh, the, your presence in these meetings. It's, it's, it's very important. It shows the seriousness that you have as an MEC Treasury to ensure that you listen to the problems. Uh, be, because this is where but the people live. Uh, people are living in the municipalities. This is the most serious category uh, in terms of the classification of the constitution, in terms of the sphere of government. It's the most important uh, sphere of government, unfortunately, and this is where problems are. Uh, uh, and also the historical uh, issues uh, that have derived our municipalities by today to be there where they are. But uh, I think we, we, we don't have time to complain anymore. We need to improve uh, the, the status quo, uh, despite uh, whatever that has also happened. I think whatever little we have, we can <clears throat> try to do something for, for our municipalities. Uh, let me welcome Honorable Tatemu who is the who is the mayor of Nala, and uh, let me give you an opportunity to then give us an opening remarks.